Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting on January 7th, 2019 at 7 a.m., 7 p.m. here in the Town Hall. The agenda for tonight is to review minutes from previous meetings, to review some mail, to take some public comment. And then we've got a few, uh, well, then we have a public hearing. And it's a site plan review and special permit application for a proposed cannabis cultivation facility on agricultural land located at 198 Mill Village Road, current location of Pioneer Gardens, as well as abutting properties at 196 and 200 Mill Village Road. Um, assessor's map 94. And this is a public hearing that's continued from the previous meeting. Then we'll do a, uh, we'll have a site plan review, a review a revised submission for installation and operation of a ground mounted photovoltaic facility on 20 acres of land at 100 Railroad Yard Road, and we'll set a date for a public hearing for that. Then we'll uh, do another site plan review and special permit application. That is to review applications submitted by Deerfield Naturals, LLC, for a retail, manufacturing, and cultivation marijuana establishment to be located at 10 Greenfield Road, and we'll set a date for a public hearing for that. Then we've got some, uh, just some announcements about other items, including a letter from Lascotti Development, a request for public records, a request for comment on a non-conforming structure at 6 Coates Ave. Then we'll take up any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this. We'll set a date for the next meeting, and we'll adjourn, hopefully, prior to the end of all the sporting events that are going on outside of this meeting. And with that, I wish everyone a happy new year. And uh, let's go through. We can say who we are here on the planning board. We have a, almost a full. John Barona. Rachel Blaine. I'm John Wheat. Kip Camosa. Paul Ellis. Max Antes. So we have six out of seven of us are here. Um, and we have some minutes from the December 10th meeting is our last one, right? Thank you, Paul. Okay. So we'll take a minute to look at that. Paul, you didn't add the the reviewer, the um, soil scientist on here. Did you it's leave? She's on there. She's there. Where? Unless I went crazy. Which one are you talking about? The one peer review one? Mm -mm. Yeah, but that's on the back side here. On the back side of the public First comment. page. I think it's the third. Oh, cat, but I see her. Soil science. Soils. Yeah, that scientist. came under public Got comment. It. Yep, 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 yep. I just didn't see her name. Yeah. And then Austin Turner. I got the, the, the numbers wrong on the front there. Yeah, some of those. It's not square 33 feet. square feet. It's, no, it's, a lot it's uh, 33,000 square feet, I believe. 33k and 140k. I'm not sure that has to be in the minutes. Um, okay. It's in the application. That we don't have to worry about.
get some water. I'll be right back. Coming down with a cold. So we want to get Arjun. Arjun's name, right? That's not his last name. Did I spell it wrong? Yeah. I'm going to check spelling now. I move to approve the minutes of December 10th, 2018. Second. Second. So I've just got a bunch of mostly typos, I think, and just mm -hmm. words here and there. Um, I don't think it. Do you mark that one changes up? the meaning to anything? Do you mark that um, one up. We'll give that one to Priscilla. Yeah. Um, except for that one that you pointed out, Paul, is. Uh, yeah, and uh, a couple of things I, I had on the first page um, where it says they have 47 licenses in 10 states. Probably should say something about Harvest Sun Mass there because it's, it's not. We don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. And then I think it's 33,000 square feet and 140. I think I left the K's out there. Is that, would that be more appropriate? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, we can get that correction quickly. Yeah. I mean, this is all just discussion. It's not a, anything official. And uh, yeah, there's some names that are misspelled and stuff, so. Anything, they just correct it and we'll give it to you. All right. Yourself. So um, we have a uh, motion in a second to approve the minutes of December 10th with uh, some minor uh, Corrections, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. Six zero zero. Who, who, who otherwise moved it? John, you I, who moved it and who seconded it? Kip moved it and Kip uh, and Max Mass. seconded it. Kip. I think we're caught up on the minutes then too because we did the others. Uh -huh. I think we still have two back in September, but I think oh, other than that we're... we did the November, October ones. Um, review mail. Anybody do that, or we can do that at the switch that to the end. Yeah. Um, so just w quickly, what we want to do is take some. If there's someone from the public that wants to say something that's something that's not on the agenda tonight, but you have a quick question or a comment to the planning board, this would be the time to do it. We're here for everything on the agenda. I'd like to take a, a minute. <laughs> um, so we've, I've been on the planning board for almost 12 years, and for many of those years, we've had assistance from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and in particular from Pat Smith. And she's with us tonight, but this is her last meeting that she's going to be with the Deerfield Planning Board as she is retiring. So I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much. She's actually going to help us with some of the issues tonight, so people who are here are lucky because we might get things done well. Um, and we are going to sort things out and see what other kinds of assistance we might get from the Council of Governments going forward. But um, I, I just think, Pat, you've been great. You've been so dedicated, committed. You're, you're, you really get things to us when we need it and help clarify things. So we greatly appreciate 
everything you've done for us and would love to say thank you and goodbye and here's something thank you so much for that john i really appreciate that and i just wanted to take this opportunity to say goodbye to the board it has been a pleasure to work with you guys this is a very busy board we have all learned so much over the course of all these years and i uh, have really enjoyed the opportunity to work with all of you so thank you so much i appreciate your thank kind you words too. thank you I suppose we should have got together and got flowers or something but at least i think a round of applause would be good And it's good when someone leaves, someone else comes. So I think this is a good opportunity to just say hello and welcome to Connor. And do you want to just come up and say what your new, uh, your, your name and what your job is here with the town? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm the very newly appointed assistant town administrator here. Uh, as part of that, I'll be doing some projects with the administrator's office, but I think a large part of my job is also going to be as the planning officer. So I'll be uh, coordinating a lot of land use projects and uh, dealing with this board, zoning board, probably CONCOM as well. Um, so hopefully I can go pants, shoes, if that's possible. <laughs> um, Not sure it's possible. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> so, um, Thanks. What's your last name, Connor? Robichaud, R-O-B-I-C-H-A-U-D. Thanks. And later this week, um, actually, I'm going to be meeting with Connor and Pat and some other people down at the town hall just to kind of figure out how, Passing batons. how it's going to all work with the planning board. So at the next meeting, I'll have an update on that. So Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, let's open a public hearing. So I'd like to open... Uh, or, or, or reopen uh, to continue the public hearing for a site plan review and special permit uh, application for a proposed cannabis cultivation facility. The plan including renovation and conversion of an existing 2.6 acre greenhouse, construction of a new 33,000 square foot building for harvesting, drying, and shipping was filed by Berkshire Design Group on behalf of Sun Mass Inc. The location of the project is 198 Mill Village Road, Assessor's Map 94, lots 4, 5, 9, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, on property owned by Pioneer Gardens, Inc., Arjun Vrend, and Carl and Sarah Davis in an area zone residential agricultural. Copies of the proposed project have been available at the town hall. Any person interested in or wishing to be heard should appear at this time and place designated. So as I said, it's a continuation, but if the applicants or some of the representatives could come up and uh, maybe just give an update of, of where we're at and if we've learned anything since the last hearing. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. I'm Richard Evans, uh, representing Sons Mass, Inc. And uh, you know, Chris. Chris Chamberlain uh, from Berkshire Design Group, the civil and, engineer for the project. And in addition to Yap and Aria, we have uh, Blake Gilmore, who is the, will be the director of security for um, the new facility. Chris, do you want to update the uh, plans that have been submitted? Sure. Um, just to recap uh, actions on our end since the last meeting. Um, first, we have formally uh, submitted the stormwater permit application. Um, the design is not any different than what was submitted on the original plans, but uh, that includes the stormwater um, uh, application form as well as uh, a complete stormwater uh, report which has also been provided to the Conservation Commission separately. Uh, we have, as I think uh, Dick is going to talk about just a little bit, um, we did submit uh, the project uh, to our own sort of peer review from a legal perspective to uh, attorney Doug Dubendorf, uh, who's someone that I believe the town has worked with on a number of occasions in the past um, to review some of the, uh, some of the uh, compliance with uh, bylaws and uh, and any interpretations that there may be. I understand that Attorney Dubendorf has been in contact with the building commissioner to discuss some of his findings. Um, through that process, uh, he did request from us a couple of uh, pretty minor modifications to two of the plan sheets that we submitted uh, that uh, made a couple of clarifications. Uh, those included uh, quantifying and then uh, printing on uh, the lot plan, the existing percentage of impervious coverage on the property, uh, which we now show that being 16% uh, 
um, as opposed to the uh, proposed condition where we'll have 19% coverage, um, which actually I should show that. That would be on this plan, which is uh, in the submitted materials. Uh, so we made uh, an edit here. Again, I, hard to read on this screen, but does say 16%. Uh, um, and then we also added a couple of notes uh, attempting to clarify um, exactly what is to be of the several lots that make up uh, this project. Um, and so just stating a little bit more clearly that um, the, actually I have a better view of this. I think this will read a little better. Um, clarifying that lot 16, which has the existing greenhouse, lot 13, which is REN's property, lots 14, 15, and 17, those are separate tax lots, but all the same property, the Davis property. Can you that, just show us where the road is? The road is right in front Oh, and the road uh, running right along here. Mill Village. Yep. So those five lots would be combined through an ANR that we would submit. Um, uh, we would request that that be a, a condition of the planning board if they want to uh, impose that uh, simply because <coughs> the purchase and sale of the properties is contingent on approval of the project and we can't combine the lots until Suns Mass owns all of them. Um, but that would be our intention. And that separately but owned, uh, what's the phrase? Uh, uh, in common ownership, in, in common ownership uh, separate lots in common ownership uh, for the agricultural fields for five and nine. Um, and I, I guess there may be a little more detail from, from Dick on that. Um, but then additionally, oops, this is a different plan. Let me flip back here and just say that. Um, Additionally, on the site plan, uh, Attorney Dubendorf uh, just asked us to uh, make a modification to how this plan is shown to make sure that we're encompassing all of the boundary to the rear, uh, including the setbacks, um, and also had us show uh, the uh, extent of the security fence and a 25-foot setback from there more clearly on the plan. Um, so those were submitted and then attached to that uh, for the planning board's record, uh, we submitted the APR that is attached to those agricultural lots. Uh, that's also material that went to the attorney. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, that you had a copy of that. Um, and then outside of the planning board context, we did meet with Conservation Commission to open our hearing with them. Uh, we are still working through the issues of the previous potential wetland impacts. Uh, which are going to require some coordination between us, Conservation Commission, and the state DEP. We're hopeful that we can res um, resolve all of the previous issues and then move forward with our NOI application at uh, the Conservation Commission meeting late in January. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yes, we reached out to Attorney Dubendorf at uh, Mr. Kalaseski's suggestion and uh, retained him to perform an independent legal review of this application, and he did, and he came back with the, those few tweaks that uh, Chris just mentioned. Uh, he also reviewed the APR, and it does not appear to be a problem. The APR is a pre-1994 APR that does not uh, have a option to purchase at ag value uh, with it. Instead, it has a right of first refusal, and we can we give the way the process works is we give notice to the Department of Ag and send them a copy of the purchase and sale agreement. They have. 60 days in which to match the offer. But given the fact that the, the, that land's going to remain in agriculture, we don't expect them to express any opposition whatsoever. So the, the APR does not appear to be an impediment to our going forward with this. I, I've got a few other things to say. Uh, go ahead. Then. Just, just quickly, of course, we'll wait for the official uh, authorization or whatever. No, from, no, from no we, state, we just so. give notice to the department. And then if they want to object, they can. Or if they don't, they, or they can sign a waiver. But, but they, don't, they don't have to authorize anything. We, we just give them notice. And they, they can respond or not. All right. That you, mean, if they don't yeah. respond, how do you, I mean, if you don't get anything back, how, how would you know what their stance is? Well, then you wait the 60 days. 60 days. And you, and you file an affidavit them. saying that we, we waited the 60 days and they didn't respond and, and you go forward. So those two, those lots that are in APR are not going to be combined with 
the other lots. They're That's just right. under common ownership, you're saying? There will be a common ownership, but they will not be combined. They will remain separate from the greenhouse and the two residential parcels. And is it of your opinion or yours and Mr. Dubendorf's that as long as land is under common ownership, that you can, I, I'm going to assume that Chris's uh, coverage of 16% includes all the APR. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't count the APR, then it might exceed right. it. So in any case, you're saying that as long as land is in co common ownership, regardless of the status, that you can claim that area as, you know, um, impervious surface. It's or -impervious. For you, it's okay. that's Mr. Dubendorf's view, Correct. too. Um, and, and we also discussed it with, uh, with Dick Kalashevsky in the building office, and he was also of the opinion that, um, that the separate lots in common ownership was, was an acceptable way to calculate the coverage. I, okay. I, I, the thing that I just would like us to think about, yeah. and we should get legal ownership. Like yes, right. if you have, I mean, so there are places in town that we just went through where there's two or three acres of land, and you know the the proposed uh, construction would be like 40 percent. But if the same person owned all the fields next to it, they'd say, well, we can cover all 100 mm. percent this because now we own, we have all we own all this farmland next to it. Mm. I don't think that I don't know what. This is a, unusual for us because yeah. normally it is we look at the site is all right contiguous so a contiguous site know, and, and if I'm not mistaken Richard Kalshevsky yeah. brought that up the last time that it needs to be a contiguous yeah. site it sounds like he may have changed his mind so perhaps he would speak well the question it. is can you call this I mean it's, it's all connected so uh, you know, what is that so we're, we're going to we're going to get some other people's opinion on this and yeah. uh, and we'll get right. back to you so both on that and the APR thing regardless of Yes, you know, I, we're going to want to hear it from the state. That's well, all I, I, uh, I think you wanted to hear it from Mr. Dubendorf, didn't you? If you're have you have you heard uh, as have you heard to, from Mr. Kalaseski? I don't know as if there was to, federal money in that. No, no, and so that's this is a public hearing, so we can do the, that tonight, maybe. Pencil. So that'd be great. It's pre nineteen ninety four. Oh, I'm sorry, you've not so you've not heard from Mr. Uh, from, is, from Dick that's from the, his conversation yeah. with Mr. Dubendorf. We haven't, and that's why we hold the public hearing, so we can hear from people's what people are learning. We don't do that outside of the sure. meetings normally. Sure. Okay. So, do you expect him to be here tonight? I I saw Dick here. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. He was here. I, I hope he's able to okay. say something. Okay. But John, just to clarify, we are going to seek legal counsel. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah. And again, and, and this is nothing against or for you guys, but this is the first one. We told you this the last time. I'll go over it again, just for the public, is that this is the first. Um, marijuana um, business that's come before us and it's a new thing it's new for the state it's new for the town we, we, we want to do it um, efficiently but we want to make sure we're listening and we're getting all the uh, legal and you know whatever consultants we might need to bring into this to double so check you want this. to get a second legal independent legal opinion no we want an independent we want a town one we want ours yeah well let's you hired the attorney you just we met. We Bill, but he wasn't working for us. I mean, we, we, we retained him, but as an independent to give the town an Yeah, no, nice opinion. guy, but we're going to get our own town council to look at it. Yeah, nothing against anybody. You, you would certainly understand that, being an, an attorney. Have attorneys yourself. ever yeah. disagreed? I, I, thought, at any point? I thought that you wanted an independent legal review. We arranged for and paid for an independent yeah, legal review. Yeah, I'm not sure anybody, I'm not sure. I didn't ask for that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, we didn't ask for that. We're going to get a town council on this. Which, which, but it's great. You've done all the homework, so hopefully it'll be nice and simple. Smooth. So. Is there like a time frame that's being yeah, we, we, That's what we want to, we need to do tonight is really get a time frame on this because we don't want it to drag out. And I know we maybe already did, uh, part of that was the holidays. And I apologize because we don't think we got to, we got to figure out what um, specialists we need. Yes. Are you going to send out for a uh, independent uh, engineering review as well? That would be a, decision would make tonight yes. we'd be grateful if you did yeah. we, we are we we're really eager to move okay. the project forward right. we appreciate you all right so so there's not many there's not much difference from last no the, uh, the last like I said, those those minor uh edits to the plan uh are the only things that have changed since we were here last right. and i do have uh so i have the, the special permit site plan uh and the stormwater you said was uh, that's submitted. been submitted recently. I thought I saw a few of you flipping through it. I did see stormwater management plan. Mm -hmm. Now, in your uh, the stormwater, 
Yes. Did you take into account, is this considered a new, new construction? As if it were, because it is a change of use. Right. It's uh, under the stormwater standards, it would count as a mix of new development and redevelopment um, because we are taking an area that has some impervious area in the existing case and then adding to it. Um, so the under stormwater standard number two to match the, the pre and post runoff, mm -hmm. um, we need to model the existing condition and determine the flow rate produced by the existing site and then uh, ensure that under the design storms we have not exceeded it. Because you're, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, you're taking what was a temporary structure, a greenhouse, and making it a permanent structure by putting a block wall in it versus, a, so now it's a permanent structure. Uh, I mean, it's still a greenhouse, and I think it, it meets uh, all the design standards of greenhouse. Uh, ultimately, we're taking a site that has, uh, as I approach the site uh, from an engineering perspective, whether it's uh, a greenhouse or a building, it's still a roof that's, that's blocking all the, the rainfall on the earth. Um, so when I approach the existing condition, uh, the greenhouse is an existing impervious area that, uh, that is creating runoff, um, going into those cisterns primarily at first and then running off the site. Thanks. Any comments from people in the public? Comments, questions? I, I thought I saw Dick. He, he is. He's hiding back there. Yeah. No, he's, he's there. Dick Kalashevsky, would you want to say a few words? Apparently, you've had some discussions on this and would be happy to be uh, updated on it. I'll put the microphone, please. Not just, not just for this room, but of course for our TV audience as well. No, the, only, the only thing I can add. Dick is, is our, currently our, our build, building inspector? Building commissioner? Building commissioner? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I just questioning. I, <laughs> I know you were trying not to be, but you I'm are. reluctant, thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, they've been in several times to go over the new plans and the drawings. They've been in to see Priscilla for conservation for um, a couple issues there that are being worked out. They're being worked on right now with the Conservation Commission, which uh, don't appear to be a big deal at this point. Uh, you can get more information if you want to talk to Priscilla tomorrow. Uh, well, just they, so they got to they got to go through that NOI. Yeah, and, yeah. But and what I the, my information that I got as of a couple days ago was it didn't look like it. Was, I talked to one of the uh, people on the Conservation Commission, and he didn't. I think it appeared to be that much of an issue. Okay, we uh, so. Do you know if they're going to do? Are they going to bring in any engineer? Because if we're going to bring in a consulting engineer to look at our, look, if if they needed someone, we might use the same person. They, for the they storm were planning water, to so. coordinate with you okay. to yeah. to, to yeah, back on that peer review. And anything about this um, impervious surface using land that's not right part of the main parcel? Uh, what's, what's well, this gets a little complicated, okay? There's, as you know, there's six lots, six, six parcels. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. There's, there's some laws that I can't quote the exact law number and stuff. Like that deal with that under merger, okay? As long as the parcels are all six parcels, do not have to be on the same deed. We've done the research on that, okay? They don't have to, they just have to be contiguous parcels under the same ownership or control, okay? The other part of that is that some of the land is in APR. It does not have to come out of APR, from my understandings, because it will be still used for APR and can't be used for anything else, okay? Mm -hmm. So the only, use of those structures, which I'll help you out a little bit here, John. Well, they may be considered, they're not temporary structures. They're, they're not a plastic hoop building, okay? They're, well, I just know that some, sometimes yeah, greenhouses are you're considered. Right, because yeah. if you go back under the agricultural exemption a couple of years ago, as you're well aware of, you can put up a hoop structure building, plastic coated, with no building permits at all, with no permission from anybody, okay? You can do them all over the place. These are a little bit different, okay? They're, they're just, these buildings are 
not that kind of a structure. Hmm. Okay, I'll just yeah. we'll leave it at that. And they've been there for several years. I can't I don't remember if you check the age of those. Uh, 99 yeah. maybe? That's something like that, yeah. yeah so they've been there for that. They're going to tear down a little bit of one structure and add back, and I, uh, you've got the plan. So. Well, I guess the point I was just trying to make yeah. that is, is if they were considered temporary structures, yeah. they no longer will be. No, they're it, not. They, they were, were not considered temporary. But if they never were, it's it's yeah. a non-issue. They're not considered temporary structures. They're, they're pretty much. Uh, so what would be really helpful to us is the things you just said. If you can just have the backup documentation for that about okay. that contiguous thing, yep. even if it's not in the same deed, yep. and then the APR, and again, we're going to wait for some reporting from um, the state. I, I can get with him to give me the thing, and I can submit it to our town council. It's Connor. <laughs> <laughs> we got projects for you. <laughs> I will coordinate with Connor to have him take care of that stuff since that's his new function. Okay. <laughs> and I would just help him as an advisor and get that all clarified. Okay. Well, whatever you'd have, you could get to him so he could have, uh, whether it be Lisa. Or, uh, Adam Costa is one that's going to handle that. The, the reason I, I bring that up, what I think yep. is so important, is that we all know that there's a lot of commercial property along Route 5. And behind route, behind uh, this commercial property is a lot of farmland. And given what we've learned tonight, any one of those lots could put up, a, 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 they could cover 100% of it as long as they happen to own the farmland behind it. And it would be very easy for them to go to the farmers and right. say, look, I'll give you. Twenty thousand yeah. dollars for ten acres, and you can keep farming it forever. It's your, you know. Just right, and now you're taking commercial property right. and t and using the agricultural property, but technically you're turning that agricultural property into commercial property. Well, not really. It, well, because it's, but that's well, what I'm saying. I understand what, what you're saying getting at. Yeah. Is that it's still being agricultural use. Right. And so, but what I guess what I'm saying is it's. Uh, Maybe a very smart legal way of circumventing and, our bylaws. And one possibility, and I don't know your zoning uh, map or code as well as you do, yeah. um, but in this case, uh, the cannabis cultivation is an allowed use in the RA zone. Right. So if it were a commercial property with RA farmland behind it, then that wouldn't wouldn't necessarily work because it's not an allowed use on that back land. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to add the, to the, that. But the thing is, the cannabis is not. Uh, an agricultural use. Correct, but it's an allowed It's an allowed use. It, it is an allowed, allowed use. Yeah, I'm not it saying is. just it is. It is allowed. Well, that's what I'm use. saying. Same thing on Route 4. My, my uh, train of thought is that the, the commercial lots on Route 5 could only be commercial. You couldn't stretch the commercial onto the RA land behind it. But we look at how much coverage you can use. And if you can only cover 40% and all of a sudden now you've got this farmland that you're going to say, well, I own 10 acres of farmland, so, you know. And I, 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 the lawyer could probably opine better than I can, but I would argue that the land you're counting, yeah. um, the use would have to be allowed on that land uh, from a zoning perspective. From it, it would have to be an allowed use in the RA zone um, to, to count that land. Okay. Let me but, clarify a little bit. Sure. <laughs> the, the cannabis portion growing in this is, while it's deemed a non-agricultural product, right. it, that means, and please correct me, Mr. Evans, if I'm wrong, that means that you can't get the agricultural exemptions for that, okay? That's right. That's right. Okay. A lot of people say growing marijuana isn't agriculture. I hear this all the time. Yeah. That's flatly wrong. What the law says is that, that for purposes of the agricultural exemption, cannabis cultivation is not deemed agriculture. But certainly, cannabis cultivation is a form of agriculture. Now, I'm going to go answer another question because it wasn't brought up yet. When they stop production of the cannabis at this site, it cannot go to commercial site or any other uses mm -hmm without coming back to the planning board, mm -hmm. it doesn't gain a commercial no, exemption, right. period. Yeah. It yeah. only yeah. maintains its residential agricultural status. So the change of use, you can't do it. And yeah. they can't change owner without coming That is correct. As well. That's in the bylaw. They can't change the owners yes. of the property, the contiguous property. They can't change anything. The without only thing they can do is use the buildings for cultivation, okay? 
and they can use the rest of the land for agricultural purposes. But once they stop doing this, again, it reverts to square one. Now you can only do residential agricultural. They can't go in there and stop doing cannabis, or they can't go in there and start doing some kind of a manufacturing facility. Yeah. That's, that use is not allowed in the- That yeah. use is not yeah. allowed, period. So, right. so if you have any concerns about reverting to commercial and wind up with a our general store in the back. <laughs> you had to say there. it can't happen. Can't do. So, um, um, Pat, maybe you can help me or someone. What's what is the uh, percentage of the maximum percentage of impervious surface allowed? Uh, the maximum allowed is thirty percent. Okay, so that's why it's. it's I've asked them to do calculations yeah. on that and submit them to yeah. you. The actually the existing site, um, if we did not include those three agricultural lots, is above thirty percent today. So that's what I was kind of getting at here. Is right. like, if, if that could work, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. If, if you, you don't need to include over, this no, back. No, no, it's above 30%. It's above 30%. Is above it, 30%. Existing, is it much the existing greenhouse though, yeah. site is at 40% coverage right now, which it's violates the zoning. Yeah. Um, it's 40% now. So now. Correct. With the plan. With yep. the input. Right. All right. All right. All right. Well, we'll get to the bottom of that. So. All right, so it looks, I think we should uh, just clarify what it is we need yeah. here. Um, and so the stormwater, let's, um, I'll, who, who wants to take this on, or, or maybe we have Connor, I guess, is going to take it on, to work with the CONCOM to get, to see what they need, and then together we could hire a, um, someone to do the stormwater sort of calculations for us and everything. It's a public meeting, Dick. Yes, don't don't I, hold your hand I, over I, there. I, I, I almost said something. I, I, I stopped myself. I, I'm, you're you're going to work with Connor, correct? Yes. yes. And I'll just assist him in finding the documentation he needs. Great. Okay. That's, that's what I was, I was kind of looking over there. All right. Yeah. So that's, so one item is, the, one item is whatever uh, engineering consultant a peer review we need for the stormwater, and we'll work on the, with the CONCOM on I, that. I, is, is, would that be the same peer reviewer as, as a general engineering review, or are you talking about two separate? Potentially two separate. So now the question is, what else do we, would we need as a, uh, for an engineering peer review? Um, and, and then we have sort of the administrative re peer review, which is what we usually often use Pat Smith for, and sure. whether she does it, or Connor, or whoever. We still do that. Um, but most of the other technical issues here are going to be some building stuff. But it's not. I mean, is it, is it? You know, how complicated is it? And do we need to have peer review engineer look at? Like, like traffic is something we often do. I don't think traffic's an issue. I don't issue think here. that's an issue. Um, you know, noise, light, all those things. A lot of these things are done are under the state kind of direction. Right. I, I would say that in addition to whatever reviews you request, the state is going to re-review all of it. Yeah. So, and, you know, when we were going over this whole, our bylaws, we looked at a lot of that, and we know that they're covering a lot of it. So if it passes their muster, then we're, it fits us. And we don't need to do anything with the building, really, because that falls under the building department. Yeah. I mean, that's just... I, uh, I got one suggestion that... Uh, you have their security guy coordinate and give you a report from the police department on the security because that covers the lighting and yeah. the uh, fencing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I know John is absolutely on top of that. All right. So. And then, you know, so we will want to get comments from all of our town officials and departments, so the DPW can yeah. say what they need to. Um, you know, one, th one thing that um, we, we don't often talk about it, but I think we should hear is we, we have an agricultural commission, committee? What do we call it in town? There's an agricultural commission. I can't remember the last time that they met, though. Okay, because this... Are you on that? You were on I, it. I, I thought you a, were our rep to it or something. I was a uh, alternate, but I, I don't think that's that's met in several years. Oh, because this would be a potentially thing they that they could weigh in, in on. Two years, John. All right. Yeah. I mean, this would be the kind of thing they could weigh in on, not, you know, just recommendations or if they sure. come to these meetings and cut part of it, but. Chris, did you address whatever concerns DEP had with the land behind the greenhouses? 
Um, what we, where that stands is, um, so just to make sure we're all on the same page. Right. Um, uh, when we submit an NOI to the Conservation Commission, a copy goes to DEP and Mark Correct. Stinson at DEP reviews it. Um, he flagged, based on some old aerial photos, the Correct. possibility that a portion of the greenhouse, um, uh, let's say, altered uh, existing wetlands. Um, and so now where we stand is that uh, the wetland scientist we had do the delineation for the wetlands is going through all the historical records that they can find. They're supposed to report back to me tomorrow uh, with where they think historically the wetland line was. We will submit that information to the state as well as the Conservation Commission okay. and essentially get their concurrence that that line is where the wetland was at one point. And what will likely end up is that based on some recommendations from the state, the local Conservation Commission will issue an enforcement order uh, requiring uh, either Pioneer Gardens or Sun's Mass to replicate wetlands uh, on a different portion of the site to make up for what was disturbed. Okay. Um, and then once that enforcement order is in place, they'll be able to consider the notice of intent. All right. I just, I just wanted to bring it up so it wasn't out there. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great. Yeah. No. This well, no, um, there was there was there was something yeah. over here. They had some aerial photos. Remember we saw them last mm -hmm. night. And I, it, only because we got a notice, I just right. wanted to make sure that they addressed it. Yeah. If, yeah um, if you look on the screen, this is where the limit of the wetland currently exists, just beyond the back of the greenhouse. Um, and uh, based on Mark Stinson's reading of the aerial photos, that wetland line may have been into the greenhouse uh, in at least some small areas along the back. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm going to rely on, on the wetland scientists to, to tell me where, where we think that, that line was, and I don't have those results yet. And our same peer reviewer could review that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you're on this map. Why don't you just go quickly over some of these things? You've got a fence. You've got Abravite, Abravite there. You've got sure. some things just to kind of give us a walk around the site. Sure. Um, yeah. To some extent, the, what we're doing is uh, not terribly complicated, but uh, it is somewhat significant um, given the site. Uh, we are going to construct uh, that 33,000 square foot um, building for the word to describe this is a little funny. I, I guess processing is is a fair word, but for, for where the harvest comes in and, and is dried and, and packaged and that sort of thing, it is uh, specifically not what qualifies as manufacturing because mm -hmm. that's not allowed right. in the RA zone. Uh, the product would be shipped somewhere else um, for for any um, manufacturing, baking brownies, that sort of thing. Um, the Existing greenhouse, the, the existing main greenhouse is this building right here, which is approximately 2.6 acres under cover. We will be taking approximately 20 feet of that building down along this edge of the site, and that is in order to comply with zoning. In the RA zone, um, a building can be located uh, 10 feet from a side property line but cannabis cultivation must be at least 25 feet. Um, so while this greenhouse complies with zoning today being approximately 11 feet from this property line, if we left it alone, it would no longer comply with zoning. Um, so it, we talked about potentially chasing a variance, but uh, it, it's a relatively ask. small area okay. um, that it, we felt the, the simpler and cleaner way to do it uh, was, was to modify the edge of this. Um, and it gives us a little better access on that side too anyway. So that's not so a bad that, thing. That, that extra 20 feet is on the, that end coming down? Is that, where is that, that extra it's, 20 feet? It's this area right here on this sort of extension of the greenhouse at the, uh, oh, at the sure. southeast where edge. Do you of the see side. that? Right down there in the bottom right hand corner. Demolish 20 feet of existing greenhouse, it says over on the, on the right note. Does it? I'm sorry. I'm... Okay, yep, I see it. Yep. And just to, we started the entrance there. So the road, sure. the driveway is the same one. 
uh, yeah, is existing? We'll, we'll reconstruct it, but in exactly the same place. Same place. Yes. All right. So that's important. So all this stuff is well off the road. It's behind the houses. Yes. Uh, in fact, the the entirety of this parking lot, while we're going to reconstruct it, uh, the layout is identical to what's there now. Um, uh, the there is um, uh, there are a few different site features on the north side of the greenhouse that will be removed first. To note what's staying, there's that series of 10, uh, something like 9,000 gallon cisterns that catch the roof water. Those are all remaining. Uh, we are still working out the design details. Our hope is to use that water for irrigation. There's very careful controls on water quality that are necessary, but it's, it's certainly a great source and, uh, and our intention is to use that as the first source of water on the site. Um, there, is, there are areas of concrete uh, as well as, as sort of uh, bare and disturbed land on this edge of the site uh, that will all be removed and this will simply be uh, seeded, uh, revegetated. There is an existing uh, tarp structure. This probably, there's a structure here that probably does qualify as temporary. Uh, it's really just a tent uh, over some equipment, although I think there's concrete under it. Uh, this whole area was poured with concrete at, at one point in time. Um, so that will all be removed. Uh, it actually encroaches over the property line, but that'll be removed and this will just be vegetated with grass uh, within the fence. The fence line, uh, as I mentioned last time I was here, the intention is to infill the rear wall of the greenhouse with concrete block. Um, the purpose of that was that we had sort of a conflict between protecting the wetlands uh, providing security and also respecting uh, the zoning requirement that requires a 25 foot setback from fence. 25 feet would have put us well into the wetland. Um, so again, we, we considered uh, running the fence immediately behind the greenhouse and seeking a variance for that. Um, but the idea of just leaving this side of the building completely closed off to the resource area uh, seemed uh, seemed worthwhile, and uh, also you know uncertainties around chasing a variance um, uh, led us to go ahead and, and choose the solid wall along the backside there. The security so that'll be part of the, the concom's got to look at that too, and as you're doing the building erosion controls and everything. Yes, absolutely, and there is an erosion control barrier that will run along the back of the building. We'll leave enough space for construction access. Um, there should be just barely enough room to get access back there and, and be able to build the silt fence outside of, of the uh, wetland. Mm -hmm. um, the security fence that I will trace runs here. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason that we added the, uh, that, that we, that the uh, my client uh, chose to purchase the Davis property is uh, primarily uh, site access. Currently, with where the existing fence line is, it gets very tight in here. Uh, and with the addition of the building, we're making the site pretty tight already. So in addition to giving us frontage, which was important for clarifying the zoning, um, this also opens things up a little bit so that we can, we can get in and out of the site a little bit easier. Um, but again, that fence line travels here and then follows the property line on these edges. Um, there is a main gate at the driveway right here, which has a small guard shack um, uh, to allow controlled access in and out. Um, but this will be the, the main uh, entry to the site. Um, in terms of signage, the intention is to keep this at a very low profile. There will be one sign, not much different than what's out there today, announcing the address. There will not be any company name, uh, any indication of what goes on inside of this facility. There will be an address and a phone number for the office. And then there will be a sign on the gate that says authorized uh, personnel only. Uh, as I mentioned, this, this is not a public facility. There are no tours. There, there is nobody within this site except the people who are supposed to be there to be working. But we do um, often want some kind of contact information. Also yes, so, so on the fence there yeah. will be an office phone number um, and then additionally anytime the facility is open there will be a guard on duty um, to control access in and out of the site. Access control is actually a very important part of the security plan, uh, which I can give a little, so Blake or I can give a little detail on that if, if there's interest. Um, 
We also will have uh, a gate on this side just so that uh, we can access the land that will be owned in common. Um, but the intention is for that gate to be rarely used uh, and, and locked. Um, there will be, yeah, in terms of uh, the questions around security and lighting, uh, there will be uh, some lighting. There are some fixtures shown on the plan. Um, typical for the parking lot, which is primarily just for safety of employees coming in and out during those times of the year when shifts are beginning or ending in the dark. Uh, this is not a 24-hour facility. Uh, it will be you know, a typical 7 to 6. I don't know exactly what the hours are, um, but uh, this will only be, be lighted certain, sort of during those marginal hours, particularly in the winter, for safety. And the reason for that is that there will be security cameras all over the exterior of this building, but they are all low-light infrared, um, sort of the, the, the latest technology, um, so we don't need to uh, light the site up like an airport to keep it safe uh, in the overnight hours. Um, how, how do you provide access for emergency vehicles around two-thirds of the building? Uh, really, the only place that wouldn't be accessible is is that rear of the building. Um, th this the distance side. here is, is oh, I'm going to estimate okay. 60 or 70 feet on this okay. side. And there is a paved strip that goes between okay. these buildings in the existing condition to get back there. And uh, here, we've gone through uh, some iterations to, to make sure that we've got uh, again, I, I think it's about a 30-foot wide uh, path and then some, some space for turnaround yeah, on, no, on this here. side. Over here, there's no. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that we just need the fire department to sign off on that or whatever. Right? I was going to say, it's a plastic hoop. There's not much that's going to burn except for the contents. No. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I've talked to the fire chief, although uh, not recently, um, about the plan to just uh, review some of the details. Uh, uh, that actually, those cisterns were one of the things that Eli highlighted. He wanted to make sure they were not going away because those are uh, sort of a backup water supply. Um, on that note, this building, uh, the, the existing building, would uh, remain qualified uh, as a greenhouse and would not require fire protection under the building code. The new building absolutely will require fire protection, and so we will be bringing a new six-inch line in from the street. Uh, we've already done the, the fire flow test, uh, and the, the fire protection engineer has those results, uh, and we've coordinated with the water district, or, I'm sorry, the fire district, um, on those questions. And now I've gone back and forth and I've forgotten if there's anything else I wanted to highlight. Yeah, that's uh, good. All right, so I guess it comes back to what a question is, do we need any kind of, kind of peer review engineer? I don't see. I, mean, I don't see that we do. Well, just no, I would just think storm this storm water. And water. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I, I feel like we understand general. all this. Max, you understand all this? Construction yeah. part of it, and they just chose to. I mean, don't we have in our bylaw that you could have a fence around the whole thing? It does. That's what this is all about. Yeah. They, yeah. Yep. Well, they don't. Uh, I don't think except they for the hush. Uh, except the fence per se. Uh, I, I, if I'm wrong, please uh, correct me on that. Um, it does have an offset from the fence if one is required uh, under the CCC regulations. It doesn't over here. There's no fence. I, I think you need to go it back stops to here. the security. Well, it stops there. I think you need to go back to the security section because all the meetings I've been to, all that fencing has been addressed and has to be approved by the police department. And, I think right. and we have met with the police department to. Um, we made sure to meet with the police uh, chief specifically around the question of a wall versus a fence in the back, and he was comfortable um, with the wall. wall. You're saying there's a wall there? Oh, yeah. A cement I wall. The, the, the back side of the greenhouse yeah, currently is just uh, plastic sheeting, and that would be replaced with, with concrete block. <clears throat> let me just make one last statement, and I'll get up and let Blake sit down. They hired Don Dubendorf, who's been before the board before for some zoning stuff, to go through all this zoning and it's very simple to take Don's report that he's done for the zoning and submit it to Adam Costa. Yeah. I'll get with Connor, we'll do that, and that should simplify the whole thing. Because, I mean, he's... The, but I want the board to have the benefit of yeah, they, Mr. Dubendorf's uh, analysis yeah, sure. and his, his review. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and I'm not sure if you're giving a copy to Connor is the equivalent of submitting it to the board. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to coordinate that together, and Connor will uh, Connor will absolutely submit it to the board and give it to them. If you we mean we outside want, of the meeting? Yeah. We yeah. Want, John, we want our, our well, we want to get the copy to them yeah. so they have it in their hand. We're happy to review it, but we're just as happy to have our town council review. Yeah. Well, I just I want you to have the benefit of it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fearful well, if, they, if we right, don't give it to you. anything. John, could we request we that we're kind of involved with the what, what kind of conversations people? between, you know, our Connor and just kind of be included in the emails so we know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. I think what we can do is take the report, get Adam's comments, and get both of you. Is that exactly what? Yeah. Well, even exactly. what I like and what I usually get is uh, I'm copied on at least at least. Um, Normally how we do it here Everybody. is that me as the chair, um, clerk and vice chair get copied on the email. So we'd get copied on the email going to the attorney so we know what you're asking in case there's a question that right. we see is missing. And then on the report back. We, we can and, get that done in a few days. Yeah. That, yeah. That's not going to take very long at all to get that done. Connor, Connor's been doing a great job on other stuff and he'll follow up on that, I'm absolutely sure. And so we'll get it to the board and yeah. it'll be a done deal. But, and then, so the other thing, Connor, is to get, and, and Dick can help you with this, is make sure all the department heads and other town officials all give comment on this. Now that we have a, and, and we'll use the latest to the, uh, this is January, dated January 3rd is the, uh, the latest plan. Yes. Right? <clears throat> Correct. And, and it sounds like I gave that already, to Connor, so I think he has that also. And it sounds like the police chief is already up on it. And the fire department, have you had? Contact with um, I spoke with him earlier. Is, which, which, which um, although is, is, that, is this going to be Darren Dear. Melnick? This is Darren. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah I, is, I spoke with him, uh, but I haven't received any comments directly from him. Uh, so you folks should certainly receive comments from him. But I'm going to follow up myself to make sure that mm -hmm. I'm not missing anything. Hmm. Cool. All right, so those are what I, I do. All right, so we're saying no other independent uh, engineering review. We're good with the Berkshire Design Group, with the explanations, with the calculations. So it's the stormwater that's going to be important, important to us then. Um, and, and then again, we. Um, What's what, what is I forget the procedure sort of with the state and with the town they they want to see what we do or we want to see what they do. When you say the state, do you mean the CCC? CCC, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, they just want to hear that that the citing this operation is okay with the town. All right, but then we're going to sort of rely on them as like about the oh yeah they do all the heavy those lifting, those security, all that stuff. They're more into that than we they are. They do all right. the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. they enforce it as well. With the security Good. plan, it basically has to follow the guidelines that the state has set up. Yeah. So yeah. And that includes background checks as well as uh, the monitoring, yeah. which again, it, it, uh, the company is very, very stringent as far as the, the video surveillance that everything has been, can be seen on video. So, so let me ask you that, because that's a, how, how far out do these videos reach? Like someone have, driving along Mill Village is that they, they on that's video? That's not that's not the object of what's being done. I'm asking, to, to I'm asking what, the is building it, what does it? It won't. It won't. It will. It will cover the facility inside the fence line itself and anything that might be coming over the fence itself. But it will not be extended out beyond where that fence line is. Right. So neighbors don't have to worry exactly. about it spying on them. That's exactly the, right. the exactly. Um, and actually, one thing that I did not highlight, but. Um, Currently, there's quite a bit of uh, hedge out there, large arborvitae primarily. Yeah. Uh, we're planning to infill any of those places where there are gaps um, with, uh, with evergreen shrubs on any property line that abuts a uh, land that we don't own. Where are you uh, going to buy the shrubs from? I hope it's a local. Uh, as, as local as we can find it, yeah. Does Pioneer Gardens do that or I different, I different types? I don't know if what they have is big enough for us just yet. but Keep the money local. All right, so I see a lot of this can be happening over the next couple of weeks. Um, anybody else have 
comments or questions out there? All right, moving right along. Comments, questions here? Okay. Should we set a new, uh, another date then and expect to get all this information so that we can mm -hmm. yep. be close to a decision, if not have a decision? So con when's the CONCOM meeting, you said? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, January 24. But that's to determine what they need to do, sort of, I guess. Um, there, the intention that they gave was to uh, clarify all the historic work, issue an enforcement order if that's what needs to happen, and then proceed with, uh, with the NOI as they would with any other project. And they're working um, with Mark Stinson at, at DPP, correct. so hopefully that can go at the same, same speed. Yeah, absolutely. I, ho hopefully Mark Stinson's piece will be uh, pretty well wrapped up this week. And then what about administrative kinds of issues? Pat, did you say you, you do want to follow through on this in the next couple of weeks? No? Okay. No, I didn't have to leave before the holidays. I drafted an RFQ yeah. for this, so we'll, we'll look at that when you guys come kind of visit. Yeah. And, um, we'll and see if it's see. we can do it internally or we get yeah, some. Because I don't have nothing to do with yeah. eight days. Okay. Seven, seven days. Seven. <laughs> Not that I can. <laughs> Not the accounting, though. All right. Mr. Chairman, I, could I say one more thing? Thank you. Um, I've put some things, a package of papers for you to, together tonight, and I'd like to leave it with you. Uh, one, of the, one of them, the top document on the stack, is a checklist, more or less. I went through the uh, Deerfield zoning for adult marijuana, as well as all the special permit general requirements as well as the site plan review general requirements. And I actually cut and pasted the entire text of those three sections from Deerfield Zoning on this page. And then opposite each section, I addressed uh, how we address each requirement and how we deal with it. And so the purpose of this is just to provide you with our working checklist, and I hope it might be helpful to you, how we address every single requirement of the Zoning. I think we've crossed every T and dotted every I as in, in the zoning bylaws. Thanks. Another thing that I'm going to give you is uh, it's called a criteria for determination. As you know, the uh, your the decision you will be making when we're done here, hopefully at our next meeting, uh, is to determine that the benefits of the proposed use outweigh the detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood. That's really what it comes down to. And so that, I've- That's for the special permit, I believe. You're that's right. Yeah. And so I've, I've listed, at the, the, the bylaws list uh, five or six mandatory considerations for that determination, but it's certainly not, not exclusive to those things. And so on this, uh, this page, I've listed those mandatory considerations as well as a number of additional uh, considerations that you, you may want to take into account. And, and I've uh, listed, on one half of this column, the uh, benefits of the proposed use. And I've left a column here for the, to list the detrimental impacts of, on the town. As you can see, it's blank. The only, it's amazing. The only detrimental <laughs> impact that I'm I so surprised. So <laughs> I knew you wouldn't be. That's why I left it blank so you could fill it in. Okay. But, 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 but that came, uh, comes from the lawyer, not the engineer. <laughs> I, I, I must hesitate, so I think there may be one. I, I'm fearful that perhaps the tax collector might have to put on additional staff to handle the, oh, the money new revenue. Oh, the money coming okay, there you okay. go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I also did some research on the impact of marijuana legalization on land use and on zoning issues generally. This is all about the use of land. And there's not a whole lot. Uh, but I did find a couple of articles uh, that I put in the package here that I think you'll find of interest, and, and one of them is a scholarly thing from the urban geography about uh, whether uh, marijuana operations uh, bring uh, problems to a neighborhood, and this was a study that was based in Colorado, as well as the first one, um, and obviously finds the negative. This is a uh, collection of documents uh, relating to the same land, mostly on land use and marijuana legalization. But also the other, it touches on some of the other benefits of, of uh, legalization on a community that 
don't directly relate to land use. And finally, a, uh, an article from the Reason Foundation about uh, whether legalization, what impact it has on crime. And um, I'll let you explore those. And I think you'll find them interesting. And I hope you'll ask me some questions next time, uh, if you have any. But I think you'll find them. We appreciate, good reading, reading. appreciate that. You're, you're doing work for the next. Uh, well, the next applicant as well, I think. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. He's done. Done. He's not here, so I'll get it. Do you have an extra copy? This has been Thanks. cited by a lot of Thank you. Certainly. So, do we have a date? so I should have also said that, uh, you know, this it's public hearing, it was posted, things were sent out to the butters, I think all that's right, but these are all the things that we'll go through as we check off all the administrative things we're taking care of, but I think that that has been taken care of. So I would like to, um, I think we're probably going to make a proposal to continue this hearing and then have a, um, ask you to sign a hearing continuation request that we all agree to. I'll get and back when are you thinking that will be John, the next meeting? Yeah. Okay. That's the 4th of February, I think. Does that work for you folks? We'll make it. That's and the that, first Monday. That's the first Monday, and that's good. Then the CONCOM will have met, so hopefully we'll have addressed a lot of those issues in between then. Um, if, if there's no new information, we can put it off a little bit further, but hopefully we'll have a, a lot of new, you know, good information by then that we can make, either make a decision or have some real specific things that we're waiting for. We, we don't like to make, just so you know, uh, we don't like to vote and put lots of conditions on things that if we're waiting for things. So the more we can have the day we make the decision, the better. And maybe the ANR. The APR. ANR. ANR. Oh, so what I about mean, the ANR? Well, we can draw it up, but we, um, Sons Mass would not own all the land at that point. Uh, the land actually would not be owned by the same entity. Uh, yeah, we're going to need that to be a condition. Yeah, I don't. So that's another question, Connor, for uh, town council. <laughs> well, just you know, when we put a time limit on it, we'd have to we'd have to look into what the best procedure is to. We understand your situation. Yeah, you understand the situation with the Davises. We yeah, under purchase and sale contract. If uh -huh. we put all the land together now, and then something happens to the deal. Yeah, and they've lost their. Yeah, they can't. So. Yeah. so uh, so we would ask you to make a Cost condition of doing of business. A, of a permit yeah. that, I'm sorry? Cost of doing business. <laughs> no, we try to avoid, we try to avoid. Yeah, uh, no, I, we can see why you need to I, do. I should hope that you'd, be, you'd help us. Uh, well, we can see why you need to do it. We'd have to, we want to do what's sure. in the best interest of the town, that's all. Yeah. So that's, we like to check with our. But doing it as a condition would protect the town's interest here. As, as, if it does, yes. All right, so I got to find another. Um, sheet. So we are not seeking administrative support on this. Right? Yes, we are seeking oh, okay. administrative. We're going to determine whether it's um okay. whether it's something we can do in house. I got you. And I'm going to meet with Pat and Connor on Wednesday about you. that. Yeah. So we want to let the So if know. there is, if we do need to hire some administrative, administrative support. support, then we'll send you a uh, estimate on that. And if it's okay with you, then you pay the bill. And then the one for the stormwater engineer will get an estimate from someone and. Have you put that up but front? You can do that between now and next Yes, day. absolutely. Good. Yeah, I think on Wednesday we'll probably decide that. Yeah. John, I have a question. Whether it's in-house or, or out-of-house, the cost still should be covered by the applicant. Yes, the same with Adam Costa. Yeah, attorney's bills, those kind of things. I mean, we, we I, I don't know exactly how it works, but I mean, we can ask a quick question to our attorney without, uh, that's kind of on our bill, but if it gets to, they have to review a lot of materials, then they give us a bill and we'll, Forward it to you, or we try to get an estimate. Is what we try to do. Is that right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, does someone make, make a motion that we continue the? Uh... So, so let me just get something clear. Then, um, when when would we, um, and how would we approve of the uh, the peer review? Oh, so. In other words, do we say, okay, John, you're in charge of it, do it? I, I think if you could make that as part of the motion of the continuing the hearing, um, 
and then town town staff and me or a couple of us could make that decision in between. Well, aren't you going to do it with co the, the conservation commission as well? Well, that's that's the stormwater engineer, but I'm saying what, um, what Pat often does for us that whole thing, along mm -hmm. with the decision and all that stuff. Any of the stuff that needs to be done before our next meeting that we need to approve, that's yeah. what I'm wondering about. Well, we need to reach out to the conservation and figure out what they're doing with stormwater because it's under their jurisdiction because there is wetlands. So I would say that we will absolutely want to hire a stormwater a, a, a engineer that can help us with the stormwater. Well, would and we we'll do, do that or would the, would the CONCOM do it and we would say okay? Yeah. So it's really going to be CONCOM. Or the, the forget how we've done it in the past. When we get a bill for three thousand dollars, does the concom and the planning board split it? It doesn't really matter. The applicant pays. So the applicant pays the town either way. Yeah. And in some cases, concom had already procured. Right. So as they procure, procure and, and, so just and we just agree. On the banner yeah. In other cases, you're going first. I think in this case, you may be going first. Okay. Um, so we can. Well, I think the NOI is in in progress already, right? Or it, the starting of it. It has, I may have led the Conservation Commission to believe that you were already pursuing the peer review engineer, so they may be hoping okay. to so jump we should, on your we, bandwagon. Let's us, so let's okay. make that, All right. let's do that. Let's so us, how do we want to do that? So let's make a motion. I move that we hire a uh, peer review consultant for the stormwater application. I'll second the motion. Discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, it's six zero zero. And we'll do that the same way we have in the past. Connor will help us. We've got a list of different consultants. We'll send one, one quick question on that RFP now. Out to them. And uh, what if there was any little ancillary things that were outside of stormwater? You know, could this person be capable of handling any kind of a peer review that might pop up? No. Okay. So uh, it's just yeah. the stormwater. Well, storm everything that goes into our stormwater application. Okay. But All not, right. Not traffic. Okay. And then we decided that we're not going to hire a technical review person. And no the, technical uh, review. Any other engineering, but that we likely will hire an administrative peer reviewer. And, and again, this is, we do this on many big projects, and in particular this one, since it's the first one, as I've said. So administrative peer review is what you're saying, right? Yeah. So, so part of that discussion on Wednesday is with um, other people at the FERCOG to see if other people at the FERCOG can do it. And in this case, they might because they are, you have several people there who are up on the marijuana laws. There's really only one other person who is working on it extensively, so we'll have to determine whether they're all there. Okay. Or okay. But if you can, if we agree to do that, then sure. if I can do that in between the meetings, that would be great. They, they would have to, <clears throat> excuse me, they would have to get all the information to the peer reviewer prior to our next meeting as well because yeah. it's it's been my experience that if they only get it a few days even a week they come here and they go well I can we assure you we'll go out the same day we find out who the peer reviewer is All right. <laughs> so hopefully you'll get that on this Thursday and we'll make a decision so. that sounds good to me of okay so just clarify then John you'll take charge of the, the of that review. yeah mm -hmm. okay with, with Connor's help, Connor's help. Make sure we get his name and all this. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Does the administrative review, is that to determine compliance with local law? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but, okay, someone said about the marijuana laws, but you really, <coughs> so our, our laws, you law. don't have any marijuana bylaws. What you just gave us. Besides the zoning bylaws, right? Right, yeah. that's, what that's what we are talking about. You just talked about the local bylaws. Okay. So it's actually a lot of what you've done the homework for us. Yeah, right. So. Um, and then, uh, a question for me because different towns approach the peer review process differently, I understand. So um, is, there, is it anticipated that to the extent the peer review engineer has questions between now and the next meeting that we would be interacting or not? Yes. yes. Okay, great. And likewise, uh, if the, the town council uh, has any questions, please ask him to we'll give him your number. contact me and not wait for the next meeting. Correct. Excellent. Yep. All right, here's a continuation sheet. Great, so we did that vote already, right? So yep. um, We did a vote to what? To continue yeah. the hearing, hearing. until February 4th. Okay, I didn't hear that one. Okay. I don't believe John, we have voted So John, on that. John Baronis moved yeah. it. No. 
John, John Waite. Waite did, and I second it. Yeah. And we voted. Okay. And Kip seconded it. I thought that was the vote to. Uh, well, that's what I thought. I that thought was we did one opinion. vote, and that oh, was. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Was that, did you have that somehow figured out to be right, one so vote for the. No, no. no. We should do a separate vote. We got to Okay, separate. all right. So I've got, I've got John W. And, and Kip to hire a peer review. Right. Yes. For. Um, uh, for stormwater and administrative peer review, and, and John and you and John Wait and, and uh, Con Connor will put the RFQ out ASAP. Now we've got a second motion here. So I move now that who, we, who moves it? I will move that we continue this hearing. Rachel, um, okay. Until and who seconded it? February fourth. We'll second it. it. Kip seconded it. Okay. The seventh. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So that's to February the 4th February. at 7 o'clock. No. Okay. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to write up this. Uh, and that was 600, zero, zero, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I sign this? Good. Yeah, I can do that. Yep. So this is a seventh today, fourth is hearing. And um, has this been to the select board already? We're going to meet. We're the, meeting Wednesday. All right. So that, that might be part of it too. We'll get a report back on that. Oh, two, four, nine. I got to write nineteen. Nineteen. Eighteen. Sorry. Seven o'clock. Can't backdate it. Big notice of here. <laughs> In this packet, I saw something about the odor control mechanism. Is yes. Who do I deal with? You or uh, Go ahead. Yeah. I, uh, do you have a specific question or just a, no, like um, to learn a little bit? I'd just like a little more information yeah. because I yeah. know sure. in previous meetings, uh, it's Dick has told us to, it is uh, well, quite It's potent. a very important uh, yeah. consideration, especially in the cultivation setting. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, there are a few different methods that have been used with varying degrees of success to control the odor. Uh, activated carbon is great, but you've got to change the filters constantly or they stop working. Uh, there are other filtration methods that, that have varying degrees of, of efficiency. What we're proposing on this facility uh, is actually uh, been developed specifically for cannabis cultivation. Um, it uses an odor neutralization that actually uh, oxidizes the, uh, the molecules that we smell to change them so that our nose nerves can't uh, interact with them anymore. So it, it literally destroys the odor. And the way it does that is there's a company called Fog Co. Um, which started off as just creating sort of misting equipment uh, that creates a super fine uh, droplets of water um, and then that was combined with uh, this odor neutralizer that's actually uh, made from essential Febreze. oils. What's that? <laughs> it actually, Febreze. it is. It's essentially <laughs> Febreze, idea, but uh, with, you know, the chemical engineers went to work to try to find compounds that would specifically target the, the odor molecules that are associated with cannabis. And so on every one of the exhaust vents on the greenhouse, and I actually I think I included photos of it, there's a ring that is one of these misting devices, and as the water is injected, uh, as the water is released, it's injected with the odor neutralizer to create a mist that then gloms on to all of those odor molecules and changes their structure so that we can't smell them, uh, and in some cases actually cause it to drop out of the air. Um, and ultimately, the standard is that there. Uh, shall be no detectable odor at the property line. Um, that's my understanding. I'm not an expert on the CCC regulations, but that's, but that's, that that's what we want to be. Yeah. Um, as far as we're concerned, a successful wow. system means you should not detect odor outside of the building. And during the commissioning process of the building, that's going to be the, the standard to which the equipment is, is tested. 
right. So thank you. Um, if you could sign this continuation, then we'll see you on uh, February 4th, but we'll have some interaction between then, I'm, I'm sure. So for the applicant, if you could, the applicant's name up here, and then, uh, and then sign and date down. John, do you have the mail while we're oh, here. Yeah, here. while we're going between? So what's in there? And then Rachel maybe can scan through. And then we'll take up the uh, 100 Railroad Yard project. All right, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. I think Surely. we missed the mail last week, last month. Right? Yeah, I think it was a long So we'd like to do a, uh, uh, we received an application for a site plan review for the installation and operation of a ground mount photovoltaic facility on 20 acres of land at 100 Railroad Yard Road. And we've been here before, but I think we have a revision and we want to make a plan now to move forward. We knew we'd see you guys again. <laughs> what do we like to find? Hundred Railroad Yard. <clears throat> is that your packet? Yeah, I didn't see anything. It's not in. You want all that? I don't know. Put it in there. Is it? Fox. So how did you get involved with this now? I know. Well, <laughs> oh, did everybody get? I is that your you. packet there? Good to see you again. <laughs> this, this here. It looks yeah. like everybody got. Everybody got. Yeah, yeah. We, we got Connor. Checked us out. Big wow. time. John, you see anything on Hundred Railroad Yard? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is what I have here. I don't think it's anything. In, in that? No. Do we have anything? 100. <laughs> no, I do not have. It was a whole box for 100 grams. Can I just get your names again? I've got your cards, I'm sure. That's Kyle. Are you kidding? Kyle Purdy, yeah. <laughs> Kyle Purdy. Do you need additional forms? We don't need additional forms. John we Drabinsky. Need, we need original forms. Last name again? Drabinsky. Drobinski, right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, be careful, don't get things mixed up. So, oh. so this is all... I won't be careful. Tom Reedy. Oh. Tom yeah. Reedy, okay. That's it. I think I talked to you. And John in that folder? No, it wasn't you. No. It wasn't me. Probably was Matt. Oh, yeah. here, you take that. Who's next? Matt Nori. Matt, and your last Matt. name again? Uh, Nori, N-O-E-H-R-E. N-O-E-H-R-E. That's correct. Culture. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wasn't there something in the packet here? Sun's mask. You did send your correspondence. Yeah. No, I thought there was. Oh, that's what you just gave. I have nothing. Yeah, so he's getting the. Dick, can you grab the box out of the office there? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. I know, it's your office. I leave hope you all, have a key. Yeah, leave all the doors open. <laughs> they trust you with the key, okay. First touchdown. Oh. And the Celtics are up by like 50. Clemson is ahead. Clemson's ahead. Clemson scored the first touchdown. It's 7 nothing in the first quarter. <laughs> so we have an application, <laughs> site plan review application from. To the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So right. Nicola Cornetta. Mm -hmm. Mass RE12. 
Um, and it's for a proposed uh, Mass RE 12 Deerfield solar project will be constructed immediately adjacent to the existing Deerfield Railroad. The proposed project will involve the installation and operation of ground-mounted photovoltaic solar panels that will generate approximately 2.5 megawatts of direct current DC electricity. The proposed project will be built upon 20 acres of land at the Deerfield at 100 Railroad Yard, Railroad Yard Road. So we have a, so as, um, since it's more than 10 acres, it's considered a um, very large, extremely large, extra, extra large, extra large. Uh, uh, solar project. Largissimo. And that is in our um, bylaws with certain, certain standards and everything. Um, and it looks like this was, um, so this application now is submitted on, on uh, December 24th, 2018. I think it's similar to one we've talked about before, but um, it's, a, it's a fresh, fresh application. And I don't have the officially stamped one. Was that in the box, John, maybe, that just came out? Can you see the one there? Did you, did you, can you get all the, and see if there's something that we should all be looking at? So it has, but it has a lot of the old stuff too. Yep. Can you can you find me this the application that's been? Yeah, oh, that's the one I'd like it. The application. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's your job. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going through the paperwork. If you could give us a quick update, um, introduce yourselves, give us a quick update of maybe where we've been, but then where we are and where we need to go is the most important thing. So. Sure. Uh, so thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Tom Reedy. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Mass RE 12 Solar. Um, looking, so to put a finer point on kind of everything, uh, maybe before we delve into too much of the detail of trying to set another hearing, um, there's nothing different in this application than was in front of you previously. It's the same size, it's the same land, everything is the same. What, what we did was we actually filed, let's call it a, a placeholder application the day before Christmas um, to try to get in front of you to talk about the previous application, if it makes sense. So you're probably wondering why the, the team is here to talk about maybe setting another date. And the, the real reason is because when we were in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals on December 20th, we received the variances, the use variance and the dimensional variances that we had requested. It is an extra large uh, ground-mounted solar photovoltaic facility, excuse me, um, not because of the 10 acres. So. It's a 20-acre site. The panels only take up six acres. We don't cross that 10-acre threshold, but um, as a result of the direct current, we have 2.5 megawatts. That exceeds the 2-megawatt threshold here in town. So we did, in fact, receive that use variance, and then we also received dimensional variances for, uh, for the setbacks from the Zoning Board of Appeals. But to put all the cards on the table, um, we've asked the utility company for a couple of extensions already before a very significant payment, $120,000 payment, which is non-refundable and is only going to go to them if we know in fact the project is going to happen. That payment occurs January 22nd. And so the, the frankly the issue is that if this is taken in as a new application, and my, I'll put my little asterisk here because I'd like to talk about the previous application and how potentially we could use that to say that November 15th vote of 311 was in fact the approval. Um, we haven't seen the December 10th minutes. It was the December 10th meeting was past the 60 day period, especially uh, as extended and agreed to. But what would happen is if you took this in, looked to notice it, you're not going to have it. You're not going to be able to do it in two weeks for the 21st because we're not going to be able to notice it um, 14 days prior to that hearing. So we're talking about being back before you after that payment is going to be due. And there's just uncertainty associated with it, naturally. So I guess the ask is 
either at this meeting ratify that vote of the no of November 15th where it was 311 to recommend it to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, or do nothing don't accept this application uh, and just rely on the November 15th meeting as that approval uh, and which has been I guess galvanized by the Zoning Board of Appeals use variances granted and then the next thing we do is I, I know that at the end of the month Matt is He's already submitted the, the payment in lieu of taxes agreement to the assessors and he's going to be talking with them about that agreement and also about the decommissioning surety with the uh, select board. So it, it doesn't put you in the best position. I think there is a path forward and we really are asking because we're in this pinch with that significant payment due, especially when we look back at the, the tapes and hear and see what we heard and saw. So. We're happy to talk about the project, talk about the variance, talk about the procedures of it. Um, but I just kind of wanted to put all of that on the table as maybe complicated as I made it. I just, you went back to the ZBA? Yes. December oh, 20th. Okay. Yes. Unanimous, unanimous vote. Yes. So something changed between. <laughs> Nothing changed. So the only thing, we gave them a full presentation. Yeah, if I, if I can, just to, just to talk on something. that on that meeting. Wow. Um, if you don't mind. That's so, where the confusion was. I, I, and the other thing, excuse me, the other thing that changed, the abutter showed up and uh, had a petition to the ZBA to support the project. Yeah, so, uh, that was a big, that's, that was a big so just, to, just to talk on that ZBA meeting, if you don't mind, just real quick, just give you the quick synopsis. It was probably about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, we went through, we were very thorough after all the comments from November 15th. We wanted to make sure we were clear, just very transparent amongst everything gave the presentation itself was about 45 minutes um, that we delivered on a PowerPoint and then um, there was public comment as well discussion with ZBA um, the project was it was we did get the variance on three conditions one was that we provide a decommissioned bond um, letter and the pilot agreement with the approval of the select board it's so just a comment on that <coughs> pilot was filed last week and it is appearing from the Board of Assessors tomorrow night and then the if We'll have some I'm sure back and forth, and then that's we are scheduled for the January 23rd to appear in front of the select board. Um, so we are going to be placed on the agenda then, depending on the meeting tomorrow night. Um, the one, the second condition was that it would the project would have to have 75 foot front setbacks and 25 foot side and rear. We were asking for 50 foot previously, right. so with the ZBA back and forth and with input from everyone, we settled on a 75 foot front edge setback. The third condition was that the project would be limited to 1.98 megawatts AC, 2.5 DC. Um, so these were those were the three conditions that were granted. Okay, so you got it under two, two, two megawatts. I yes, mean, that, that's, that's a change. You weren't willing to do that at the first meeting. Well, it was. Um, we were at. We were at one your point, application. We we were at 1.98 megawatts AC before. The bylaw only stipulates two megawatts, not AC. Right. DC. We figured that out last meeting that they yeah. don't so, stipulate AC or DC. Right. So. A so, savvy. so so that's so that's where so we so we did and like I said it was a long meeting but um like I said our understanding was that November fifteenth is that like I said I know the, the planning board to take a vote on three one one and that it was approved contingent on the ZBA passing that no I, and then at the November fifteenth meeting ZBA wasn't in favor of the project we withdrew the application and then we resubmitted um, I know I think it was November thirtieth I think I believe we sent you a a, a letter um, kind of saying hey we've reapplied with the ZBA. Um, and look forward to just continuing the discussion in January at the January planning board meeting because um, we couldn't get on the planning board agenda for December because of the ZBA and whatnot. Um, so that's why we're trying to figure out is kind of where the what kind of happened in between then. Um, we weren't at the December meeting. We don't know what happened there, but we thought that everything is was approved. Um, continue on the ZBA. I thought. So, what, what is your understanding, well, Rachel? You shared that meeting. Yes, I did. That I was, thought we approved it. November 15th. And we didn't approve. What we, we did was we, we recommended. We recommended it. We, we recommended that the ZBA um, make. Make the, the exception. Right. It wasn't yeah. unanimous. The, we just the, were making a recommendation. Yeah. We could, weren't voting. Could someone refresh my memory. Was the peer review done on the stormwater for yes. that? It was. <clears throat> we, right. We and we, 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 we yes. actually, a month earlier, told, told the Congress we'll use the same engineer. Okay. And, and just. <clears throat> They um, we received our order of conditions from the Comcom back mm -hmm. in, I believe, November. Nathan, whatever his name is. Yes. Nathan. Yeah, Nathan. Nate Russell from GZA. Russell. Right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So what are you looking for from us? I guess ratification of that November 15th 
vote. Um, I guess in the alternative, the, the issue becomes the way your bylaw reads. It's you have 60 days for action from the submission or from your receipt of the submission. And so it was submitted August 23rd. But I know that there was an agreement to continue it, I think, to November 8th and then to November 15th. And ultimately, ultimately, we're looking for site plan approval. If we can get it this evening, that would be fantastic um, without having to go through a rehearing, a, a re notice, and kicking it over to what it sounds like the beginning of February because of the time crunch with that significant payment. Um, and the alternative is that 60 day window had expired, and I, we just don't want to go down like a constructive approval route. Can, John, we actually voted I to know. reject this plan. I know. So we do have to. At the December meeting, because of that 60 day constructive thing, we said we need to make a decision, and we said we do not approve the plan. And it was, our, it was my understanding at the time that you were coming back with a new plan. Yes. And I was like, oh, great. Let's just get that one out of the way, and then we'll do the new plan, and we'll make the new plan go quickly. Um, because at that point, we learned that you, things were going better, the neighbors, everything was, was fine. So we actually did vote. I Yes, I remember that. So to, to, uh, then we need to approve the new plan. So <clears throat> would it be a and, and going back to that November 15th vote, it was to, to uh, recommend approval of the project. It says right here okay. to recommend approval of the project to the um, CBA. to the CBA. It was not to approve the site plan review. No, it was never about that. So then it was kind of in limbo. So instead of having it hanging, just go out, hanging there. out there, we said let's let's, let's 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 just stop that and start over again. And we couldn't vote for it because yeah. we didn't have the variance. Right. So, I mean, that would be the better way. Now you got this complication of you know you you got to put some money out and you don't know that it's been approved. So I I can now let me just let me just get this straight, John. In other words, the only reason we rejected it was for the fact that the zoning so you, board had turned down their variance. No, because the zoning board hadn't turned down their variance. Mean, we, we weren't sure, I think, about. No, but when we rejected no, theirs, yeah. we had they had already turned it down, yeah, they had. and that was the that was the basis on which. Well, then there was no way that we was the basis, because, right? Because you couldn't approve it because it's not allowed in that zone. So the answer to what I said was yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. So so we have not. They're not asking us to do anything different than we were prepared to do. Right. Before. Do we have to have a public hearing now? Yes. Yes. That's the rub. Yeah. Yeah. We could schedule a quick one, but it has to be two weeks. It has to be noticed. Yeah, you know. the legal notice. Yeah, the legal notice and stuff, and 14 days. The paper, so at least we'll look yeah. at it. Well, from where I sit here, I think the same people will be at the public hearing that are here tonight. <laughs> and we'll I don't, want, drag them out I don't want to tell you what you to do, but I would feel pretty confident that things would be in your favor. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, just going back over the records, the, the only issue was really right. a lot of it came down to the sound because you're cutting down trees, and so that's been and kind that of resolved. Was, uh, all of it was resolved. There was no Everything other was resolved technical or administrative no, all, the, all the issues were resolved with the abutters. I, I think the issue, when we just go to the way back clock, the, the ZBA didn't want to make a decision unless you guys made a decision. You folks didn't want to make a decision unless the ZBA made a decision. We that couldn't was, make it. We right. couldn't, yeah. yeah. So, well, you, you, you could, well, you, we, have a, you have the ability under the bylaw to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, we understand what we got. So the 15th was hopefully to work things out. You know, the planning board was very generous in saying, you know, we want to either approve it or send it to the ZBA. Thank you for that, and you did. And the ZBA uh, made their decision. But after the ZBA heard everything in detail, with, and with the butter's input, they definitely, it was a unanimous vote. And you were there when the ZBA voted uh, three to two was very, a very negative ne evening, from our perspective. And so every we all in agreement, so but we, we got to follow the yeah, bylaws. So, yeah. so we we'll yeah, schedule tied, we'll yeah. schedule a public hearing at the at the earliest date oh. and uh, move through it very quickly. If I could actually add a comment, um, our decommissioned payment to Evers I'm sorry, not decommissioned payment. Um, our payment to Eversource is actually due January 24th. It's not 26th, January 24th. Would there be a possibility if we can get an ad put in the paper, you know, possibly within the next two days to have possibly a public hearing scheduled within 
before that date. I know that's tough and We're pushing watch Carter do his calendar um, thing and see. see if so it, because. John, personally, I don't mind meeting for something real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think we'd all be willing to do that. And we, and, we, and we understand we know it's been a tough process and going through these past couple months, and we've, we've already received two extensions from Eversource, and I'm, I'm still trying to push for another one, but I know it's going to be very slim. Um, so well, trust me, I'm still trying. Chopping at the bit for that. But, yeah, yeah and, and I know I know you guys have been a lot day. of work Can't these last couple it? months. So. 23rd? Yeah, as long as we make it just for this and make it quick, fast. Do it six o'clock. Fact is, have to be in the paper. Has to be posted at our town hall. Paper. Paper for public hearing. But it has to be published Wednesday. It has to be published Wednesday, so they would have to get it. Can you? Can they? Can they? Yeah, yeah. But if there was, if there was a way, can they notice it on the back page of the front section and the ads there? Yeah. That's a paid ad. You could do a paid ad. Oh, I thought they had just next day. I, I thought the recorder had next day. They have next day ads, but not legal notices. The mini ads are next day, but yeah. not legal. Okay, that's what I just asked. Actually, you yeah. said yes. Oh, they're not? Okay, it has to be in the legal section. Uh huh. Okay. Just say if there's a possibility we can get it in there before then? Yeah, I mean, I suppose well, this isn't a public. This, you don't have to continue it to a date time certain oh. right now. So if there is an ability, if we have some way of getting it in so that they do publish it Wednesday so that we're able to be on the 24th, I then. I don't know if they could do it. I mean, even I don't, if you I call don't them tomorrow, either, frankly. You know, we won't know until tomorrow, until he tries, when right. they would guarantee that. Most of you check a couple right. of days. Or we, we, <laughs> because, I mean, I well, I, I, we do a lot of and I, with them too, so we can try to. Well, actually, to comment too, it's it would be the same ad as well because nothing's changed from the project since the original ad. Yeah. So well, the they already dates, have the ad drafted, well, which might help with the have timeline. They change the dates. And stuff. What? Yes, and yes. I, I apologize. The dates they would, but it's all you know from the last time, from the last time they do have it drafted because because we did have to repost for the ZBA as well, and they turned that around actually within two days. Maybe we were lucky. I don't know. Yeah, but it was, but, but just, uh, and like I said, we know you've morning, done a lot. Well, so. today's Monday, so if right. somebody gets a hold of them first thing, it begs and begs and begs. I'm staying, in, begs. I'm staying in town tonight. I'll go there <laughs> first thing in the morning. Please. But what's yeah. the worst case scenario? You piss away $120,000. <laughs> 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 you are saying it's so easy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think John says he'll. <laughs> yeah, I think John says he'd loan it to you. Oh, good. Oh, good. We can wait. We have plenty of time. Well, so what we're saying is, if I make an emotion saying that we are available to meet. Well, no, let's schedule a meeting. Schedule a meeting, yeah, and we then we can cancel it. I guess, well, right? what? Yeah, we can schedule the meeting. What for the twenty fourth? Third, right? Twenty third. Well, the twenty third. Twenty third. That's what I'm. Twenty third. Twenty third. Because you have to have that in we're by the twenty fourth. Mm hmm. That's correct. Select board meets at six o'clock that night. Um, but we can meet before. It's not going to take. Yeah. And I think you're single to the applicant. You guys going to vote positive? That's positive also. So. I'll never make five, but I mean, I'll, I'll double check and confirm. Well, how many? We gotta have four people here to do it. I'll be here. I'll be here. Me too. But that's five. Roger, my All right. So there's a motion. Uh, Rachel moves to schedule a meeting. Schedule the public hearing. Public hearing. I meant for to say. The for the 100 Railroad Yard Road. Yeah. At five o'clock on uh, January 23rd in the town offices. Second. I'll second. All those, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Is it five? Five. 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 Okay. So I, so I don't see, so you didn't officially submit this, right? What is that? That's your site plan application. Sorry. We resubmitted on the 24th 
-hmm. Right, but I, I haven't seen the stamped. That's what I kept looking for. Is the stamped? Uh, is it in this? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. The actual that, that our town clerk accepted town stamp. Clerk stamp. Oh. The new application. Because I have the one from back in August. That's why I'm wondering if that's the right file. Well, that's why. Well, we have lots well, of files in there. So John, could this, be I've been going through it. This is the. Uh, we'll follow up tomorrow. And do they have to? They have to just send the mailing out to the abutters to the the. the yes. yes. Yeah. Butters too. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Connor can and yeah. Yeah. Can do that. Connor this is the EPA environmental so still, stuff. Don't have to do it. Reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable amount of time. Hearing continuation request November 15th. All right, so Connor, your list is getting long. So if you could just put that in there and make sure we get the officially stamped. <laughs> Yes, All right, and then um, thank you. Thank you. And so the things that, yeah, just to be clear, like the things we're going to mm -hmm. yes. hear about at the public hearing are um, uh, setbacks, setbacks, and um, trees, trees, buffer zones, yep. buffer zones sound. sound issues, mm -hmm. traffic, traffic, erosion control, and how much the you know trucks coming in, going out, all that stuff during construction. All right. Oh. We can do an abbreviated, because it, it, it was a pretty lengthy yeah, presentation no, last can, time, but we can do something I can, abbreviated. I can skip through some of them and whatnot, or we can much go more through it too, but it was, um, yeah, we have seen this it was very so, uh, so this isn't a, a public hearing, but I'd like to know, is, does anybody have anything to say? Uh, nobody can do that for Anybody from the public have anything to say about it? That is so nice. Yes, sir. Priscilla received that too? We haven't seen it. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen it though. We really appreciate your. But I did. I heard something about it, so. Yeah. Well, let me just finish up with him if I can. This is not about a decision. I'm just asking. Uh, I'm, I'm just asking some general information, information, and I just want to follow up. So um, we'll, we'll get that. But the most important thing is if, if we held that meeting on the 23rd, if some Somebody. of you are here or not here, or, you know, that it goes smoothly, I guess, is really what we're hoping. And there was also a letter issued by the railroad. That's a very good point. All right, which right. is also, yeah, I'm not yeah, sure we I, had that I can before. talk on either. that, too. Yeah, that was from Pan Am from landowner. Well, I, can, I, can, I can provide that. If it's all positive stuff, it probably yeah, should just wait for the next meeting. So. Yeah. yeah. So if one person or several could show up and. Yeah, and we can go right through that. Through it. Okay. All right, very good. Okay. Thank you. So Thank you. if something yes. happens and we can't have the meeting on the 23rd, we'll set a new date. Do we want to actually propose a second? Date, just in case. Well, what, what? is what? What does I don't that know do what for you? Uh, uh, I mean, make it a day later. Twenty fourth is the second day. I don't. No, I don't no, know. the I second date would be um, if if you can't get the notification. The well, that's right. what you're saying. If you can't get it in the paper tomorrow mm -hmm. for publication on Wednesday, mm -hmm. then what's that next date? And I think what Matt was suggesting was. The later. Thursday, the 24th, okay. because hopefully scenario. they'll, the I'm recorder okay will, that if it needs that's to okay. Be the two day lead time. So at least then we're as close as possible so that check doesn't clear with the utility company. <laughs> like I said, just to be transparent with you guys. So just, yeah, I uh, love the transparency. So, so. Yeah, transparency. It we, is, that's yeah. unusual. <laughs> uh, you, you all show up, yeah. you use your yeah, real yeah. names. Yeah. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. What else do you expect? Uh, they, they, no, they still got some funny name on the thing. Who's, who's, the, who's uh, Nicola? Nicola, that is, he's actually the, um, he's the manager of Mass RE12 LLC. Okay. So, so this is, we haven't met him. See, he's been here, I think it was here one meeting a long time ago. Isn't that the one guy of the with early the big horn, Ricola? <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so the 5th, so let's, I mean, 24th, we amend your, um, 
25th. Well, then what, why don't I say? Or make so a the 23rd motion. and then the 24th as an alternate. As an alternate date. Right. I amend my, my motion, my original motion to. I'll amend my second date. Thank you. Okay. To reflect, uh, to reflect a secondary date. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? He should zero, legal. Zero. I don't know how he's that. He's going to have to do two legal. No, he's going to. No, no one, no, one and one if they don't accept it, then we'll just change yeah. the date to the twenty fourth date for the legal notice. Is, is, the, is, is the, the old legal notice? I was just going to make one up real quick. Just it's actually yeah, in just here. Yeah. It's, it's highlighted. And the list of voters that as well. Is the meeting on the 24th at 5 it's p.m. as well? Five also. Folders. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. No. Fine with me. That's not good. Actually, good. Bring that back out. Because there's a, um, that's concom that night. Too. There's a what? We, I mean, I can do it at 5. Well, we don't have to meet in this room. I mean, no, it's no, no, going to be a small. That. I understand Right, but that. we all, we could use skip, so that's why I didn't want to do it in the same ah, as the cycle. Yes, there's no So do you want to do it at 5 on the? Yeah. Five, both, yeah. Five, yeah. five, both days. Five's fine with me, too. Okay. I will be there. And then the abutters should get a notice in the next week or so, so you'll know if it's that Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Sure. Thursday. Great. Thank hey, you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you then. Sorry, I wanted to apologize to you. Um, solar shutting off at night. I, I learned that solar panels would pick up from moon light. Oh, full moon. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen night, one maybe. watt produced on mine. I've been mining 22 watts, 22 volts coming off of mine. <laughs> I wondered I about that, yeah. It's the protons that oh, so come like off from the sun that. That are, that are what does it, Listen, I found so out. So, the best so they reflected the protons, the, the protons back. I wanted a good bright sunny. I, I looked at yeah, my several something. times at night and it's zero. Okay. Then I was out there a full moon. I looked at it and it's 22 volts. Okay. 22 watts. All right. <laughs> moving right along. The watts were 0.6. I know. I know. Okay. It was very extremely low. Yeah. But it was I there. That was there. I appreciate that. Well, I just had to measure. How many panels do we have? One more item. Yeah, site plan review and special right. permit letter. Deerfield Naturals. Uh, uh, it works. A letter. Yeah. My house, like, put put furnace, boiler, uh, light, saw, everything works. Mm -hmm. Batteries go down. Oh, we back back in the 100. Yeah, we, oh, oh, we, we have, have to read the whole 100. Railroad gear, can you put that back in? Yeah, I'll get in there, John. I shut everything off by the time I pick up and get out of there. And we do have a. We have a. Okay, I'd like to. He's leaving. Oh, bye bye. Yes, she told us nine o'clock. So I don't disturb you then. All right, so, but do we know um, who's uh, who's who? Do you have your money on here? Clemson. Clemson. How are they doing? Up fourteen thirteen. Excellent. <laughs> fourteen thirteen, he said. <laughs> fourteen thirteen. They're ahead by one. Ahead by one. All right. Okay. And the so Celtics now. are ahead by five in the third quarter. So thank you very much, Pat. I'll see you thank this you week. Yeah. All right. We, Thanks. Oh, I'm running it all, you guys. She doesn't look like she's okay. retired. Okay. Yeah. If we, uh, I asked her if she wanted a job working at Deerfield. <laughs> if we move <laughs> this along, maybe we can catch the end of it. Right. All right, let's go. <clears throat> we received a special permit application. Uh, a site plan review and a special permit application from Deerfield Naturals LLC, 10 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield. Uh, the description of the proposed use in detail, including square footage where applicable. Marijuana retail, 9,990 square feet. Marijuana manufacturing, 2,376 square feet. Marijuana cultivation, 18,612 square feet. Are the applicants available to present the project? This is Appli not that applicant. This is not that little house, right? No, it's not. I thought so. It's a different one. Because no. when it said when it said uh, Atlantic Furniture, that's not the one. We, that's not. Correct. Good evening. How are you? Good. Can you just give us a uh, tell us who you are and what this is about and we'll your see where it goes. That's yours. I'm working for Deerfield Naturals on the project. You've got to uh, speak into the mic there. Paul, oh, yeah. Paul needs to get this. Uh, I know, I'm asking him to speak into the mic. Uh, Matt Plotkin. Matt Plotkin. P-L-O-T-K-I-N. And you're, are you the guy that signed this? Yes. Oh, no. 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 So who are you? 
uh, a member of Deerfield Naturals. Got it. Sorry. A member of what? Deerfield Naturals, the applicant. It's your email address. That's what I'm looking for. It is my email address. All right. Can you describe what, what uh, the site plan review and the special permit is for? Yeah, so it's, uh, we're seeking, we already have a community host agreement from the select board. Uh, one is for cultivation, one is for retail and manufacturing. So we're proposing to use two areas at the 10 Greenfield Road site. Um, so one area in front towards the Greenfield Road uh, will be the retail section. And then in the back towards the railroad will be the cultivation and manufacturing area. Hmm. And have you, we all have full designs in front of us, some of us do, or not? No, I don't, no, this is, this is for, uh, this is all, all right, so I'll get I haven't seen anything. And so the feeds have been paid? Yes. There's not going to be a lot of things like we normally do because it's an existing building. Uh, Correct. Right. There's no change well, to the yeah. exterior yeah. or the site. Oh, okay. Well, except there won't there be fencing around the... the it's already there's there. an there existing fencing. fence. There is a limited landscaping plan, but that, that's about it. Okay. Now, Mark Vallone signed this, right? Correct. And he's involved with it as well? Yes. Oh. Right, so what was... What was clear to me, that's okay. I got an email back on December 21st about this, and uh, it's a change of use because basically every, every marijuana business it's a change that's of coming use. to us is a change of use because yep. we've never had it before. Right. So everything has to come right, before right, us, right. and change of use requires site plan review. So, so it might not be the building itself, but there's all the other parts of the site plan review that we have to review. Okay. So. Yeah. All right, so we've got, so it looks like the $250 check was received, it was stamped and signed by the town on 12 27 18. Um, we have some plans. Oh, so there. tonight we could ask a couple uh, clarifying questions or something, but then primarily we have to schedule a site plan, uh, a public hearing. Public hearing, yep. For both the site plan review and the special permit. And do you know if did it, uh, does this, does it require a stormwater, or you've determined it doesn't? No, there's no changes to the site. So it doesn't, so no. you don't think it requires a, no. a stormwater? Uh, so, right. so that's something. special we'll, permit. Yeah, but the special permit it does. Right. So, okay. all right. so we'll just double check the stormwater thing and, um, and move forward. So any um, further questions tonight, or are we ready to schedule a public hearing? Schedule schedule public hearing. Just, yeah, I mean, anything right now is moot really until the public hearing. Well, it's away. Not, I mean, but it's probably excessive. Yeah. <laughs> what's that again? I did. What's the? Uh, John's moving, making a motion. I think. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, schedule a public hearing for um, the first Monday in February. Sure. So what? Of course. So at seven, we've got the. Um, <coughs> Berkshire Design will be back in, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that'll take an hour, you think? Oh, yeah. It'll be an yeah. hour plus. If we have all the information from our consultants, it might Pretty be an quick. hour, but. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's schedule 8 o'clock. It's a public hearing, you need to post the time. Right, I get so, that. Or should we move him to 6? That's what I was thinking. Move this one, this one's yeah. going to be faster. Move this one to 6. You think this one's going to be faster? It's not a whole lot to it. We've also, also we can continue it if it's it. taking it too long. There's I mean, not, you give it an hour, uh, right. and you could always keep it. APR land and lines and wetlands. I'm thinking the, I'm thinking the special permit what? might always take time, mm -hmm. but. There's wetlands? No, no. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that. John's just that, making that a list of what it's not. There's a lot more things. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Just, I was out of the room, so I think I need to jump. No. Oh, yeah. We're just getting to that now. All right, so does that, do you want to do six? So six you think six. Monday night you get there at six? I can, yeah, six is fine. Can you? You will have a on the fourth? set of plans coming your way. Um, those aren't stamped because they weren't uh, reviewed by the engineer in time right. to get stamped. So. Yeah. All right. Good. 
So, John Baronis, did you move it? I made, made a motion. I, I, do I need to? Uh, yeah. I, and who I, seconded it? Do we really need to make a motion for that? To, to set the date. Yeah, yeah, set the date for okay, the public so hearing. Okay, so February 4th, yeah. I'd like to make a motion. We set the date for the public hearing for uh, 10, 10 Greenfield Road. Correct. Um, Site plan review facility. and planning. Site plan review and, and special permit. Hearing. And somebody second it? I'll second it. Yep. And special permit. That is correct. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? And we did we decide 6 or 8 six. p.m.? 6. six. six. But then we will try to stick to an hour. Um, and if we need to continue it, we can. Um. Yeah, why, why don't we yeah. start? We don't do that enough, an hour and it's hard. I agree. I yeah, agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I think that, and mm -hmm. I think in this case too, it's new and we need to see, the, you know, yeah. go through the plan. Yeah. And, I, and I, I agree with you, John, but sometimes we have a harder time. I think it's easier sometimes to sit here 15 minutes longer if we can wrap something up instead of well, scheduling another meeting. But yeah, I agree, I, you're I, I agree what you're hours. saying. But if if you know if we're going right. an hour and a half to two no, hours, no, I agree. And then, and then especially if we end up needing more information, that it's not going to be, sure. be found yep. that night. Right. Then it's better to just it's well, we're probably going no, to have to. No, I'm not saying if there's five minutes left to go. No. Then oh, sure. sorry, no. the hour is there is there any kind of peer review needed at all for this? Uh, certainly an administrative, administrative. because that's there's it. a lot of that's, boxes that's what, I, that's what I'm getting all, at. But it's so. going to be similar to the other one. Uh, but this so. is actually, um, this will be our first uh, retail in Deerfield. So we want to go over it carefully and, right. you know. Check, but I'm just saying, can we, we'll probably say that we're going to we'll probably have to continue it from the 4th anyway. So. Yeah. Matt, where's yeah. your posse? Uh, no. Well, you know, I actually didn't even know this was happening. I thought it w I would just get the, the hearing scheduled, and I just happened to go on the town website and be like, oh, I guess I should show up tonight. So you're, you're lucky you have anyone, I guess. Well, if you weren't here, we might not have done it. Wait, without no, the stamp, you're lucky that without the stamp <laughs> plans, it's not like we might not have scheduled a public hearing. We, but you're yeah. telling us we're going to have stamp plans the next time? Absolutely. The other piece of mail um, that might be relevant here for 10 Greenfield Road? No. Relevant to 10 Greenfield Road. Yeah. Do you have mail there? I have mail. Is, yeah, well, yeah. Is there anything we, from the town of Waitley? Yeah. The, I, I why, why don't you read that? Because that's relevant, I think. Okay. Um, all right. I'm not going to bother with the the one dated January 3rd because there's one January 15th. It's the same thing. Town of Waitley Planning Board, Waitley, Mass. Notice is hereby given that the Planning Board of Waitley will hold public hearing on Tuesday, January 15th, 2019 at 6.45 p.m. at the town offices for Sandy Lane, Waitley. Toro Verde of Massachusetts, I guess, uh, the third, has applied for site plan appro approval as required by section 171-17 dash a dot two and one seventy one dash twenty eight dot six d of the Waitley zoning bylaws for the project proposed to use existing commercial storefront for retail sale of adult use marijuana on premises owned by old state road llc at 424 state road which is the sugarloaf shops okay so there's an application for a special permit for a uh, uh, retail establishment, one property over uh, from 10. And according to our bylaws, there's something about how closely Proximity. these can be. Uh, I would say that it's a different you know. town, though, so it probably yeah, doesn't I mean, you apply. may want to check I, I don't with council, know. but I would say that your bylaw only affects the town of Deerfield. I, so in our, just to let people know what, what we're looking at is section 4665 dimensional and performance standards. Section 8, a minimum separation of 2,000 feet is required between marijuana retailers said distance to be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of each facility to the other. So we would need legal opinion on this. Yeah. I already did. I talked to Adam Costa a couple months ago about this, and Adam Costa's opinion at that time, okay, which we need to review again, was the 2,000 Thing would apply. It would apply. Who comes first wins. That was the last 
So whoever put in for their special permit whoever, first. No, whoever got the state license. Right, it's not up to us, it's up to the state. That, okay. Particular piece of property, meaning that they planted there. Okay, so there's still so a So you got to go through the process, they go through the process, so who gets there first? Well, Which the town first? of Waitley does not have that zoning bylaw, so. Yeah, Waitley doesn't have it, but Deerfield does. So they can plot themselves in Waitley even after Deerfield starts. I see. But Deerfield can't plot themselves in Waitley starts. Hmm. To be but honest with you, I would. opinion, and we should, Connor, should have it re reviewed. There should be an. We're really picking on this guy today. <laughs> <laughs> In regards to distance? Yeah. No, so we're going we're gonna to get down council. Yeah, it's, it's not even worth talking about. We need to get it in writing, John. Yep. I got it verbally. We need to get it in writing. We may need to, you may need to change the bylaw if you want to continue. Connor, what do you think your first day? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did we do without him? <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's not his first time. All right, so we'll, we'll see you at um, yes. <laughs> 6 o'clock, and you'll bring your team, I guess. And Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last order of business is um, other items. Well, I think we need to read about the bananas. Okay, you, you're, you're on. The, okay, Rachel Rachel wants to bring up some mail. Okay, there's some, there's some mail here that you need to hear about that I'm, everybody is that uh, Greenfield is looking for a, a zoning ordinance in order to allow the production and storage of gourmet frozen stuffed bananas. Oh yeah, I saw that in the paper. <laughs> so just, you, just the, in the, case. the background is that Dick and I know this guy that makes frozen bananas and he, he wanted to locate in Deerfield. Oh, yeah. we could have it's had frozen Dave, bananas uh, here? It's the Dave uh, guy. We wanted to open up at the old Masonic building on North Main Street. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm on TV, so I'm not going to go any farther than that. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, with the proper zoning. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Where are you going now? So, in, uh, well, I think at the, at the, at the, at the, the Franklin Main Street County end. Seas. No, no, not Franklin at Franklin County. It's at the other end of Wells it's Street. It's an old, it's another old building. So he's. I pointed it to the start Oh, good. Was it that Dumont? So, okay, Dumont. Okay, Dumont okay can we get back to the sorry, agenda sorry, here? My fault, my uh, Rachel distracted us here. Um, yeah, that's right. So, on December 27th, uh, the Deerfield Planning Board received a letter from Lascotti oh. Development. Uh, South Deerfield DG Series LLC. So, dear Chairperson Wait, please allow this letter to serve as a formal request for the following public records in the possession, custody, or control of the Town of Deerfield related to South Deerfield DG Series LLC. Application for a retail store located at the northeast side of Mill Village Road at the intersection of Greenfield Road and Deerfield. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, so they want public records from April 19th, 2018 through the present day. In particular, they want public records regarding communication between or among town planning board and other town or related government employees or officials, including but not limited to Franklin Regional Council of Governments and town council concerning the project. They would like any public, public records regarding communication between or among town planning board concerning the project. Any public records regarding communication between or among the town planning board or any member of the town planning board or any member of the public concerning the project. Any public record regarding communication between town planning board and their third party reviewer, tie and bond, concerning the project. And any public records containing video or audio recordings of any town planning board meetings concerning the, pro the project. And they would like, they said, please provide a response to this request prior to Friday, January 11th, 2019. Thank you, Chad Brubaker. So this has been um, circulated to town officials, and they are in the process of... Well, there is a packet there. There's a packet in there that... Uh, that right there. She does. Yeah. Can you speak into the mic? Because people on TV can't hear you. Sorry. So April 19th, you said? Is that the date? 11th. Huh? April 11th. January 11th. From. They want the records from oh, April 19th. Since. 19th. That's what I thought. Oh, sorry, said. sorry. Through present day. Through today. Through year to date. So that package there in front of you, uh, we do need back. It's on the copy. Uh, Diana put it together. It's correspond all the things they were looking for, basically. Um, but if there's anything that the board has, uh, correspondence between, I don't know, anything you wanted to add to that. Uh, we would need it um, by Friday, earlier than Friday. Yeah. That would be 
Does anybody have anything that might be? I, mean, I, well, I get the emails email just like everybody wait, else. Wait, that are, you want to speak? No, I, I get I get the emails from the chair and just like everybody else, and I read them and I'm, I. Don't she probably already right. has most of those included. So, yeah. I, I so think that, that's that sort I of mean. thing you probably find. Can you pass a comment? No, I was going to say if you have any emails that are from from you to um, Pat, that mm. I don't know if the town they would be on any town computers. I think Pat. Pat did a went search through of all her files as this well. week, and I so, think she, okay. she's actually having it reviewed by her boss, and okay. should get it to the town tomorrow. Okay. Anybody else? Minutes, Paul. You've submitted all the minutes. Actually, we should double check that. Well, you said we got those. We got some September ones missing, and we can work on those. Yeah. But so they'll get that tomorrow. Or? Well, I, I've got what what uh, uh, Rachel I, I, started yeah. on the tr one. I have of them. everything but the comments on that one. Okay. We have town town comments. So, so I've got an informal list, so I can put I can put those in. Are the minutes like approved minutes or? No, nope, they're not approved. No, they've not been approved. We I mean, we're going to send them the video link. That's good. Oh, that's okay. what we. That's going to that's going to be it probably then. But we can do that. So I can just say that I, th throughout this process, as we do with all processes, I try to have very limited uh, discussions with applicants of substance in between meetings because that's why we have public hearings and mm -hmm. that's why we have, you know, the monthly meetings. Um, so yeah, any emails were, were mainly between them. And again, we always CC. That's part of the yeah. reason why I always CC the uh, vice chair and the clerk. So um, those should all be in, and, and town staff too. So I can't imagine there's anything that's just among planning board members. No. I Most can't. of it goes through the town, and, or it goes through Pat, because she was our peer reviewer for that, mm -hmm. for that period. So, But if anybody has anything uh, that's being requested, so public record wise. So we don't know why that's being requested. Mm -hmm. But it is, and we like to honor that. So, mm -hmm. all right. So, thank you. So, you'll follow up. So, I'll leave that in the folder here. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Actually, I'll take. And it you get you get to charge him for this. Uh, so <laughs> the, the law is you can charge for over. Sorry, you can charge for over two hours of staff time, and you can charge per page. But yep. we're doing a lot of it electronically, okay. so right. we're not planning go. to charge. Okay. All right. We ran into this one time uh, somewhere. Maybe it wasn't the planning board somewhere else. If it's really onerous, you would. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Connor, where did the 100 Railroad Street file go? Because this belongs to I have it, yeah. Sorry. I don't think you need to bring it back out, but just be uh, sure that this. Any, uh, anything else some we should talk about? Um, oh, the request. Wait, wait, wait. There is one thing here. Is there re oh, for comment. Oh, it's a request for comment. Six codes out. Six codes out. The type of proposal. Special permit to extend a non-conforming structure to allow the continued use of a hot tub deck, seven feet, 11 inches from the side property. The existing house is about four feet from the same property line. And this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. And they must, does the mail say when they're going to? No, oh, here it is. Uh, January 17th, they're going to have a meeting. So if we have anything to say prior to that, they're requesting to extend a non-conforming structure to allow the continued use of a hot tub deck. What's that, the Polish Club? <laughs> oh, Six Coats Ave, isn't it? It's over there. <laughs> oh, Julie Whisk. Oh, the other side. So do we just say no comment or no problem or no? What? No comment. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know enough about it. I can't make a comment. I don't well, when we get, when, uh, we get them back and people put no comment and you say, well, we need to have something from them, so. Uh, but uh, no problem? No concerns is a good term. No concerns. Yeah. I mean, how, well, how what does that? I mean, they aren't going to make it any worse than it is, right? Yes. They're building closer to it. They're trying to go closer to the line? It's a, yeah. a non-conforming lot. Yeah. With non-conforming setbacks that you will make more non-conforming. <laughs> You mean it'll it'll cut we that? Not yeah. it'll be setting closer to the line. It's getting closer to the line. Oh, that doesn't sound good. C zoning. Well, I mean that's a zoning board issue. I mean, zoning. I know they're just asking if you have a comment. Well, like I, I mean, say, we, I don't. So our, our, no, our concerns would be ongoing. Well, Bernie, Bernie concerns. will take care of that because it's totally against the zoning, right? You know, but you have homes that were built 
prior to the, it's, it's a tough, it's but, a t tough thing, you know. But you don't have to add to them. If, it's, they're, not, if they're not conforming, no, why, not, would, you add, just, why I, would you add to them? It's a requirement to go to the ZBA because it will place it in a more non-conforming More non-conforming, right. yeah. I, 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 yeah, I would just say. I don't know if you get a hardship on how to. <laughs> well, if you get a bad back. Oh, okay, a hot shower. So, do we want to say we don't like <laughs> making things more non conforming? Yeah. Yeah. The door's not coming. Yeah. Um, I would just say it's right. make, see, it appears that it's making things more non conforming. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Because we don't have a diagram of where it's going to be. I mean, right? that's what the ZBA no, is for. I mean, we're, we're, we're here to put in front of the, t the voters. We, there's what no drawing ask. to show where this. No, we don't have any. You just know because no, they came to you, you, right? No, but all you need to know is that it's it's a non-conforming lot with a non-conforming structure. Obviously, predates predates. But it also says to, ex to extend a non-conforming structure to allow the continued use of a hot tub deck. And the hot tub was put there after the fact. The existing house is four I, feet I, from the same property line. We put it in without a permit. Yeah, I, I don't think we. You need I, a permit I, to put a hot tub in. When you put it on a deck. Oh. You need a permit for the deck. I just think that you don't want to get in the business. And, and uh, I mean, that sounds like also that there's an enforcement issue that we're kind of piling well, in on. Use your best judgment. We trust you. I was going to put no comment. But now uh, you're all making mean, comments, so I can't put that in. This, this applicant, as far as. But I think it's good. It's true. We don't like making things more non conforming. Yes, that's it. That's Is what that you write that down. We so, don't approve. We yeah. don't like me. It's more, more, more non-conforming is complicated, more complicated. Maybe as a plain more normally doesn't like to make that. Now, there's exceptions. That, well, the problem that I have with variance is that is that they're forever, forever. But I don't know. The deck's not going to last forever. Let, let them hash it out. <laughs> no. Well, that are we close? Get, so you get the, the variance for the deck, the deck gets removed, does that variance still stand for a, a deck down the road? I would think. It probably does, right? Sure. The variance is forever. Sure. Oh, shoot, another piece of thing. I need, uh, I will need a campaign finance report from you for your activities. Who needs to do a campaign finance report? These are people who um, were up for election last year? Or this year, this year, or is this this coming? Coming, this coming year, yep. yep. Who's, who's up? Who's up this year? But this says through the end of the calendar year, December thirty first, two thousand eighteen. So all elected, must, all elected, elected members, members must sign this report regardless of the year of your election. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For all those campaign contributions, there is. Is there a signature page there? Yeah. So yeah, I guess we can. Let's just sign it tonight and be done with it. Sign it first. So this is the. Um, this is the 20th day of January. I certify them a candidate. I is it something that's not received? Right yes, it is. Yes. It is. Okay. What is this? Yeah, I mean, if we could all look at this now, that'd be great. You were signing under the penalties of perjury, I guess. Okay. And you mean under your perjury, John? No, no. You're keeping <laughs> your, your own individual perjury. I can sign that too because I didn't get you to check for that contribution yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> They don't count that, do they? Um, yep, signing. All right, that's what we know. Anything else? We've already set a date for the next meeting. Yep. Six o'clock. Oops. Six o'clock. Yep, on the fourth. Oh, what's um? Twenty third. Oh, five o'clock is the next one. Yeah. yeah. On the twenty third or twenty fourth. Yeah. Okay. So next next meeting. You want to list both next meetings? The if you let's list both, let's list next both of them, so yeah. 23rd so. and or the or the 24th, and then again the 4th. Next yeah. meeting. Print sign. January 23rd slash 24th, 2:19 at 5 p.m. Be here a long time. No, this is a quick one on the 23rd. Yeah, I know, but I got to stay here for her. Oh, then, yeah, yeah but, if, but maybe it'd be on the 24th, then you won't have to. Yeah. <laughs> then I have to go to a skims meeting. And then the next Clemson meeting. up twenty one sixteen over Alabama. Celtics up eighty nine seventy seven. February twenty February fourth at twenty nineteen at six PM on that one, right?
hearing nothing, do I have a motion to adjourn? I move, I move that we adjourn. All those in favor? Um, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain.